Yeah, we've come for our last signature. Yeah, I got the cute. The cute. Come on, try it. We are going to have a good day. How do you do? You see, I'm ending here. What kind of phone is this?
Motor I greet you members who have turned up today for this workshop, both physical and online. And I thank you for sparing the time because this is the way to go. In the country, when we have a recommendation from the Ministry of Education and Sports, to take on a curriculum under review, we may need to be supportive because everything is done to help the country move forward. And wherever we refrain from taking on what has been brought to us for use, then it means we are failing the system. Not only at Inkumba University, 
but everywhere, everywhere in the country, because it's the means of education that regulates our education in the country. So if it recommends a particular curriculum to be used, we only make an effort to understand how we are supposed to use it, and then make sure that we give a feedback to them. Has it worked well? Is there anything to be added? This is how we support our education system to move forward. I wish to welcome Mr. Lugemwa, who is a minister. He works with Uganda Christian University, Mukono. He will make other introductions when he comes up. But at the same time, he works with National Curriculum Development Center. We had to have him come over. I've already shared with you on our platforms that uh, we needed this workshop in such a timing because we are supposed to understand exactly what goes on with the new curriculum so that during our training, as we follow up from the schools of attachment that we have already and those that we are to get and the exercise of school practice that is upcoming soon, even those who are already there, we get guided on what exactly we're supposed to do. You very well know that when you're still a student, when you move to a system which is already operating, like secondary, primary, and the necessary school, if you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, people who have already been in the field will tell you that they will always refrain from working with you because you are wasting their time. You are wasting their time. How? If they have taught, they are meant to teach seven topics. So you, when you come in, you do not even know the time frame they are having because you are not prepared in your mind that a scheme of work is running for a particular period. That's why we make an effort to prepare you satisfactorily when you are still at the university, such that when you move out there, you are not subjected to discrimination. I thank you very much for turning up, and I request you to be attentive to the guidelines that are going to be given. Participate accordingly. We are to have discussions, we are to have group presentations, be cooperative, and let us make sure that we are open. Where you find that you have not properly understood something, please raise up your hand and ask. The person we are working with is a teacher, and teachers are accommodative. They can punish where necessary to put you back to shape or to a proper line. But they will always know how to help you out. So let us trust him, let us work with him, let us be cooperative and make sure that we benefit from this workshop. I thank you for coming. Please be attentive. I welcome you, Mr. Algemwa, to take over the floor. Natural dumb dumb. 
Kuba msawe kasanyi bizole to wano. Kwa tebulu njezi 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 njezi. Mwakuwa. Um, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and um, I thank you for that but I know Dr. D did intentionally to wait, say that the right person does the right thing. So thank you for doing it in the right time. Um, like Dr. said, I'm Patrick uh, Lugemwa uh, from Uganda Christian University. I coordinate the profession and continuing education that side uh, and at the same time lecture in the ICT uh, department of the School of Education. However, at the same time, like she said, I work with the NCDC for all these curriculums. You see, we developed them from NCDC there. Then finally, we came to these prototypes, and finally, the books are out. The prototype is just a blueprint. This was to guide the people writing the, the, the real books that S1, S2, and the whole of O level is going to use. But finally, uh, I think as the term was concluding, the, the books came out. Book one and book two are all out. Three and four are being commissioned come mm, the beginning of next term. They will be also out because we finished them already and uh, they are coming out. So uh, I know all of you have studied what we call uh, curriculum and education and education technology, at least somewhere, somehow. Uh, developing a curriculum is a process and uh, changing or reforming a curriculum is a process. Changing a curriculum means overhauling a curriculum. It's very hard because it's very expensive. However, most countries, and the truth is, it's not true that every information that is in the old curriculum is wrong. That is a lie. It's not. It's relevant. The only difference may be in the ways, methodology of delivering the information and the modes of delivery of the information. So what we are having at lower secondary is a curriculum reform. There are reforms that we are made, most especially in the modes of delivery. And uh, that's why we are all here to see how we can go through it. I've done this same workshop in several universities and institutions. So I guarantee you, as others have got it and they have done it right when they go out for school practice and while they are teaching their students, I'm very sure people of Nkumba uh, will also do the same. I'm Entebbe born, I know people of Entebbe are very sharp. So we shall do it because we people of Entebbe, we do it already. So we can do it. Um, before us, uh, I'm going to request some of our members to... to, to, to to serve out uh, the syllabi depending on the subject combination. At least if well, there are people for geography, they can get that for geography, people for math, like that. Because what we're going to do is to first go through uh, the new syllabi for each subject, but each in their, in their group. We have to be divided in our groups because they are not enough. We can't have enough for all of us, but at least we have. And on top of that, again, they're going to serve out um, books, which we call the uh, prototypes. They're going to serve out um, learners' books and teachers' guides. Uh, I know what I'm speaking uh, right now seems to be abstract, but by the time we finish, we are going to be together. I in this so-called new curriculum, I also take the nomenclature, even when I know it's wrong. In this so-called new curriculum, for a teacher to be able, yes, we give a round. It would be better, I think. I think it would be better if we... Yeah. 
I know some of you are saying these people are inconveniencing you. We are not. So us putting you in those groups, we are trying to, to bring you together so that we can think together. If we have many people doing geography and they have another subject combination, some may divide themselves to another subject combination to, 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 to make the groups a little smaller. Because you may be doing history geography, so you can go for history if geography are many. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dean and Josephine and the teacher for, who has, for English. Thank you very much for the work. I really wanted the students to do that, but <laughs> the teachers have, have, you know, in the competence-based curriculum, it's more of student-centered than teacher-centered. We expect students to do more of the role of a teacher. Then the teacher plays the role of a moderator. Simply to be there and guide where they may be going wrong. You know when you are students sometimes, even when you know, you sometimes go off. So the teacher's role is just to guide. So that's why I, I, I really wanted the, the students to volunteer. Uh, but since the teachers have volunteered, the next time it's the students to volunteer and do something that we, anything that we are going to do uh, next. Um, I was saying, like uh, Dr. Esther said, this curriculum was developed a little earlier than people think. Um, in 2016, the president promised to support uh, the competence-based curriculum. And uh, the first lady also pledged to do so. In 2018, we started off 
with the guide or the guidance of uh, the Cambridge uh, curriculum specialists and some UK curriculum specialists. But mostly it's Cambridge. If you get to, to follow this, it's so much of Cambridge a standard. So they guided us on how to come up with a curriculum which is student-centered. If we really want to develop the student's ability of doing rather than knowing. So today, I want us to know that as we're going out for school practice, or as we are teaching and learning, we, the market, the job market, or the market out there, in fact, we want people who are job creators than seekers. It needs someone who can do something rather than someone who claims to be knowing something. You may be having papers, true, but what you do does not really defend the papers you, you have. That's why we thought that the old curriculum needed reforms to make it more student-centered because if someone practices from S1 to S4 and is the one leading the, 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 the lessons, there is no way a student will not be able to become competent. Now, one will ask, what is competency? If we talk about competency, put it in a slide form. Slide form. Slideshow format. Slideshow format. Up there on the menu called uh, of Live Animations, got slideshow. Uh -huh, yeah. Then begin from the beginning. From the beginning. From the beginning, up there. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, uh, the, the old curricula had many areas that were spoon feeding a student. In fact, a student was viewed as a spectator. A student was viewed as a passive learner. But to our surprise, after these uh, specialists of Cambridge coming to us and telling us, you are lying to yourselves, these students may be knowing even more than what you know. We thought it was a lie. But to us who have tried to monitor the teaching of the competence-based curriculum. We are believing it, and teachers are also proving it that we didn't know that our students know things that we even don't know. Just give them a chance, they discuss. You'll get ideas that even you didn't have. These students' parents are doing things that you, you as a, an individual cannot do. Some of them are teachers. The father is an engineer. The, 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 the mother is a teacher. The sister is uh, a, a doctor. The, the, the brother is a lawyer. So that student interfaces with four or five professionals. That student, the language they speak at home is for lawyers, for doctors. For, they know a lot. So it's only you, the teacher, to trickle a student. Then the student will get a portion of the much knowledge that they have and start giving you. So your work will be just to guide them and they organize it in a palatable way, in a better way that can be consumed. But they have the knowledge. So this is, uh, the, 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 this is what the new curriculum, or what we call the competence-based curriculum, came to solve. It came to bring out students' skills, to bring out, I mean, to develop students' knowledge, to develop their skills, because they already have some, we just need to develop them, to develop their values and their attitude towards a particular subject. When we are going to be talking about uh, this curriculum, there are words that you're going to hear later. You're going to hear the word competency with E, competency with E, people of English will guide us. Then there is competency with Y. Then there is a word called skills. There, are, there is a word called knowledge. There's a word called values. And there is a word called attitude. I repeat, we are going to hear words, competency with a C, with an E at the end, competency with a Y at the end, then skills, then we are going to hear the word um, knowledge, values, attitudes. 
if all those most uh, knowledge, values, attitudes, and skills come together and a student gets an understanding of all of them, then a student will start showing signs of competency in something. Now, a little bit, let me do this work as a, for a teacher now. I'm going to act a teacher right now. Competency with C is your ability to generally understand and perform anything at a basic level. The moment you have the ability to understand and perform, the real doing is competency with E. The moment you have that ability to do something practically, if it's reading a poem and you can ably read it, bring out all the punctuations and someone can know that this is a comma, this is a full stop, this, you follow the rhythm, then you are competent at that. You've gotten the skill, you've mastered the skill, you have gotten the right knowledge, you have the right attitude, and you've gotten the right values. Brothers and sisters, trust me, if you do not have a good attitude towards something, you will never do it right. How many of you are forced to, be, to do uh, teaching? By show of hands. How many of you didn't want to do the teaching profession? <laughs> okay, I know you fear to put up the hands before your teachers, but it's okay. And, uh, <laughs> okay, how many of you love the profession? Good. Even if you don't put up the hands now, but check yourselves. I know there are those who are forced to come to education. But you check those people who are not so serious with the teaching profession. In most cases, their attitude is not developed. They feel like it was the last resort. Daddy said, I had no money, let me go to education. You get it? So you don't give it the attention it deserves. And I guarantee you, you will never output the best. But let me tell you the good news. If you got maybe uh, Mr. He was called, I beg to the name again. Mr. Okay, I can't say Mr. Thomas. Uh, Mr. Kavuba. If Mr. Kavuba came and talked to you very well, and you start getting a sense of direction, or Madam Josephine talks to, talks to you, and you start getting a sense of direction, love the subject, you will develop the right attitude of the subject. I guarantee you, your next performance will be better because now you give it the attention it deserves. You get it? And if the attitude is upright, then the values of that same profession will come. You start seeing that. I think moving with the shirt hanging out is not right. If it's not a free shirt, you get it? I think moving while kicking stones is not right for a teacher. Not so. So be because now you've, go you've developed the love, the, the right attitude, you can do it. Then you go out to see the skills. How do teachers do their thing of teaching? You'll be able now to exactly deliver the right way teachers have to deliver. But it all started with the attitude. You get it? Then there, as you continue practicing the skill of teaching, you start developing the competence better and better. And by the end of the three years, or even when you go, some of you go out when indeed you are not competent enough. Because competence also has levels. Basic, moderate, or accomplished. So you may go when you are just moderate via teaching. But when you go to the field and see that indeed it's enjoyable, you can manage teaching. Then you develop the skills, become better and better. Finally we shall say, this is an accomplished teacher. He's fully competent so, the competence with E is only measured by what you output. However, when we say competency, what is your competency at this? Can you prove your competence at, we want you just to prove to us, either by giving us papers or explaining that I've done, I've developed a curriculum once for this, I've developed the other, because when you come for a job interview, we are not looking for your competency of doing, because you cannot do for us immediately there, unless when it's an aptitude test. And somehow, somehow oral also cannot give us your competence fully. However, you give us your competence with why. You explain to us. 
I'm the one who developed this curriculum, the culture. I've taught mathematics here. I'm the one who developed the numbering system. Of there we are saying, ah, this man is competent if he can develop the numbering system of this. He has taught uh, mathematics at Nkumba. He has taught, from what you're convincing us, we are determining your competence. Now we shall say, okay, let's wait and see. Let's see him proving to us that he's indeed competent at teaching mathematics. So those words, we interchange them. Whenever you hear, we see competence with E, it means we want someone to do. We want hmm, to, to see someone do. It's competence with I, we just want you to convince us that you can really do something. Uh, that is it. For the skills, your ability to do something is a skill. The moment you have the ability to do something to the expectations of maybe the employer or the set standards, because already there are set standards, if you can do something to the set standards, we shall say this person is skilled. But having that single skill may not be enough to call you competent, fully competent. You may be moderately competent until when that skill is developed to the maximum, co coupled with other skills, because competence can't, doesn't come with one skill. You have to have several skills. Then we can say now the person is so competent. You may be a good mathematician. You know how to calculate, but you don't know how to deliver it. Until when you develop the art of delivering it to others, then we can say now you are competent at teaching. I repeat myself. You may be having the skill, but that skill alone may not be enough to say that you are fully competent. Until when you combine different skills, values, attitudes, then you compose yourself and present yourself as a complete teacher. We can say, yes, he has the knowledge of mathematics, but again, he can deliver it. And at the same time, he can mark measure and evaluate hmm? very well. We have always been in the staff room. Now I'm speaking to my fellow teachers. My fellow, yeah, we are teachers before becoming the things of lecturers. So I always say we are teachers. Eh? Before, when we are in the staff room, there is a teacher, a fellow teacher who can mark a paper and you also wonder. Score was 95 to a student and you look at the paper and you, hmm? in your wisdom. Three people of you, you say, if, if, I, if I was given a chance to mark this paper, this student would have scored a 75. You give all reasons beyond reason, and everyone says, yeah, you're right. Everyone says 75, 78, 70. You are all in there, balancing there. It means this person of 90, there is a problem somewhere. Three professionals cannot go wrong. And if you beg that person to explain, you'll hear that. He maybe <laughs> he was impressed by something very small and excited and gave the mark. You get it? Then there you are not yet competent at awarding marks. Or you are not so skilled at awarding marks. We need to first get that, develop that skill, and then later we shall say, now this teacher is competent because he, can, he knows the information, or the, he has the knowledge of the, everything. He has the skill of delivery, but he has also a skill of evaluating fairly so that person now is fully competent. Are we there? Good. Now, this curriculum you see has what we call the preliminaries. You can go to the first slide. The preliminary section has the introductory part of it. When they were setting this curriculum, National Council and Ministry of Education, because all of us know that National uh, Curriculum Development Center is uh, a body under Ministry of education. So National Curriculum Development Center and Ministry of Education had this in mind that on top of the subject matter in this syllabus I want us all to turn to page um, you read uh, these are the beginning ones, page one, page two because they are the ones which have the rationale and the guidance to why we are here to study, to, 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 to co-opt this competence based. But what I want us to hear that this curriculum aims at, this curriculum aims at uh, producing a student who is all round. In other words, these are the key learning outcomes of whoever 
goes through a competence based. No matter whether you're using math, when you're a student of mathematician of mathematics, when you're a student of uh, geography, when you're a student of uh, ICT, well, we don't mind. But what we want is if you have gone through what we call a competence based curriculum, these are the key things that you must display at the end. Number one, I'm saying this again. We don't mind your content of mathematics, we don't mind your content of ICT, but whether you are a student of ICT, a student of mathematics, at the end you have to display these key factors. You must be self-assured. You must be a self-assured individual. In other words, you must be a confident individual. And you know that I can make it no matter the challenges. Number two, you must become a responsible and patriotic student as a must. If you go through this curriculum, you must be a responsible and patriotic student. And these things come indirectly. You may not know, but we teachers, as we are setting activities and activities of integration, we factor in such things. So a person, again, who will do this curriculum will be a lifelong learner, a student who is ready and has the zeal to be learning each and every other time. You know, trust me, our students in the old curriculum did not have that love for learning. Why? Because everything the teacher could come and dictate notes. Then go then go and you go out. But nowadays you can not. There is no dictating notes. It's not. You, you, you just set a topic. In top, you can come and surprise students as you're going to see when we, have, when we go to lesson preparation. You can just come, start with a, a maybe if it's a scrum and partition. You throw sweets in class. So you scramble for them. And they scramble. Partitioning. You get it. So from there you ask them, what have you learned from this? Or you tell them you, you write on the blackboard that we are going to talk about scrambles and partition. Who knows what the word scramble and partition? You're even allowed to, 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 to go on the internet or to use a dictionary. Then they tell it to you. Now you tell them from the activity we did at first, what did you see? When I threw sweets, they will explain to it very well that, yeah, you're right, we scrambled for the sweets. Then when I told you to settle that I had a basket of sweets, and you settled, and the class captain served out, in peace. What was it? Then they'll say that was real partitioning, in peace. You get it right. You, you can start with a scenario. Not coming. Today we are going to start about scramble and partition, scrambling and partition. You know, when the Europeans came, scrambling and partition, ah, oh God. You're not going to give them a chance to reason. We are not yet there. So let me not go there at now. So what I was trying to say that all these can be achieved being self-assured because if a student can interpret hmm, an action of throwing sweets as scrambling, then that person is self-assured, uh, self like it or not. Being responsible, a person whom you tell, settle down, let's sit and see these sweets served to each and uh, all of us. A person who can understand and sit and listen, then that person is a responsible and patriotic student. So you develop those what we call key learning outcomes. They are called key learning outcomes. I don't want you to mix them with the subject learning outcomes. Each topic has its own learning outcomes. But these are called key learning outcomes. That a person who goes through such a curriculum must be a self-assured person, must be a responsible citizen, must be a long-life learner must be a positive contributor to the society. You must be knowing that if they tell us to settle and we don't settle, we may end up fighting. Are you responsible? Then they are not responsible. And you're not positively contributing to the, to the, to the, to the country. Then after that, again, Mr. Said, apart from the key learning outcomes that we expect to see our teachers display out after this curriculum, in fact, this curriculum is not teaching teachers. It's teaching students who later become engineers, lawyers, medic, medical doctors, teachers. You get it right. Because this curriculum is going to span up to S5, S6. It's going to go. The whole secondary is going to take on this. And you know that primary is already in this. Primary is using this. It's kind of competence-based kind of curriculum. Thematic curriculum, you know it. So it's more or less the same. So... Um, 
we are going to, to, to make sure that these values, key learning outcomes and values, do not end at all level. They are going to span up to a level. So we say that after the key learning outcomes, we need a student who has values. And all these values are also here. I'm not going to explain them because they're all explained here. I'm just going to read about them and tell you what they are. Uh, we need a student later at the end of whichever subject you've studied. We need a student who, res who has a respect for humanity and the environment. Agree with me? Most of us don't have respect for humanity. You go on killing each other, fighting each other. That is not respect for humanity. Undressing people. I see men undressing women and they don't mind. That is no, you're not gender sensitive and you don't have, hmm, uh, you, you don't have respect for humanity. Environment, you eat a sweet and just throw anywhere. Huh. Do you know in how many, in a few years that we're going to suffer together, all of us. So, uh, honesty. Honesty, you have to be honest. Yeah? Not coming out and lying to us. One tells you, but you man, you have stolen this yogurt, I've seen you. You say, ah, I've not, I've not eaten this yogurt, yet even on the mouth, someone can see the traits of yogurt. Eh? You know, be honest. At least say, I, I apologize. I've done it, but I was so hungry. Anyone can understand. That, that, that you pretending. Hmm? A teacher comes, finding, finds you shouting all over the class, and you, you pretend. I, 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 I was just asking for my pencil. Do you have to stand on the table to, to, to announce the absence of your pencil? I mean, don't lie. Be honest. Eh? Then another justice and, and fairness. I'm telling you this curriculum is training lawyers medical doctors, we want people who are just. Let us be realistic. Someone has come to the, to the court before you, his land is being taken, uh, uh, because the other has the money, the rich man, you go to the side of the, of the rich man. Those are things that this curriculum is eliminating. You people, if these students that we are teaching go through this curriculum, and they, you, you really implement it because you are the teachers, me and you are the teachers, and we implement it in the right way. We shall have fairness. People will be, will be doing things in the right way. This curriculum is not here only. It has started in South Africa, it's there. In Zimbabwe, it's there. Ethiopia, it's there. Mm, the whole of East Africa, apart from Burundi, Southern Sudan, and Congo, they are the ones which do not have it, but the rest all have it. Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, they have it. So they are trying to improve, to empower students from down here. By the time they come up, I tell you, we shall have gold. We shall have gold. So if we have hardworking, self-reliant students, if we have students who have integrity and moral uprightness, if we have students who are crea creative and innovative, hmm? creativity, and that is so key, creativity and inno being, being creative and being innovative. We are all teachers. We are taught by the same teachers. But you know that when you go to school practice, there are some students who are just outstanding. The way they display, first of all, their scheme of work, their lesson plan, the way they, they, they teach their lessons, you can also admire. You get it? But they are all taught by the same teacher or lecturer. You get it? What sets them different is the creativity and innovation. Mm, social responsibility. I mean, are you a responsible citizen? If you phone someone for, uh, I mean, uh, maybe throwing uh, or littering into the channel taking water, can you tell them please? Or you pick it and tell them please never throw this again, something of that nature. Uh, social harmony, national unity, and national uh, consciousness. All those are values. And finally, uh, not finally, the other general thing is called the general, generic skills. And by the way, these generic skills People forget them. But like it or not, if you are going to produce a competent student, he or she must possess the generic skills. Which skills are we talking about here? Of critical thinking. Each exercise you have to give students must force them to think critically. Are we there? Each exercise you should give to students. So from today onwards, if your lecturers left you with a lot of coursework. <laughs> Don't complain. They are doing the right thing. If they give you a lot of activities, our students, let me tell you one thing, you are getting lame. The things of us getting books and giving you, uh, you go and read pages. And yes, I can guide you on the pages. 
but not even photocopying for you and giving you that. No, I'll just direct you that go to this and this book on page this and this and this. Read about the next topic for discussion tomorrow. Then you come and you discuss, not me as a teacher. Why should I? I did my degree a long time ago. I did the second degree. I'm doing, finishing the third degree. For you are there, not even on the first degree. You get what I'm trying to mean? Why should I practice what I've already done? Let me give you a chance hmm? to practice. My role should be a guiding role. I tell you, go and read from pages 2 to 10. All of you. Then you come following these guiding questions. I give you like seven questions. Group 1 is taking group 2 like that. Then you come later in the class. Group 1 explains what it understood from the reading it did. Group two comes also explains its part. Three, four. Finally, you can call one student to summarize that. Can you summarize generally what all, what it, it's all about? A, the moment students can present what you give them, and one or two come and summarize everything, then there they are practicing what we call a competence-based curri curriculum. You are empowering them. They are doing rather than knowing. They can even. Eh? They read and understood, they got the knowledge, then they are able to display or to practice what they understood. That student is good. So now your role comes in when they are go getting astray, because sometimes students misinterpret questions. So your role is there to guide them and say, mm, I think, how about if you thought about it in this direction? Don't you think if you did it in this way, then they can come in and throw in more light? Get them, okay. Today you presented in that way, I beg. You go back and following my guidance, you revise it and present it again. Next time they'll present it to the best of their ability. You've helped a soul. Rather than giving them notes and they read and then you give coursework and then tomorrow they wait for the exams. They have gone as they came. Some people hide the books even under their pillows and they go for clubs here. I saw so many clubs around here. So they go and they forget. But man, if you have to present tomorrow, <laughs> you'll, you'll read. And you be, because you'll be ashamed. And your group mates, uh, what we do, we award marks. Even when you're in a group, we award according to your contribution. We shall call the group leader and the secretary, tell them, what was his uh, contribution? Before all of you. Ah, for me, I did this. All of you show me what you contributed. They will give you their contribution. And finally, a person who didn't contribute will get a zero. The next time you learn a lesson. The next time you learn a, le a lesson. And you'll organize his disorganization. And do the right thing. So, like that, you are helping them, like Dr. Esther said, that teachers, we are, we, we are disciplinarians. We sometimes punish just to put right. You get it? We do not punish by hitting on the head. We punish by hitting on the bats. By me giving you a zero in the first discussion, you'll organize your disorganization. Next time, you'll participate. Haven't I helped to bring you right? I've helped you. So what we are doing to you, go and do it to the students, but in a good way. Some of you are so merciless, you, you, you don't have respect for humanity. You go there and give corporal punishments to students. Those are our students. I'm a parent, my friend. So handle those kids with care, because we also handle you with care. Not so? So when we say that you have to be a responsible citizen, those are the things we are telling, telling you that. Me punishing you by giving you uh, a retake. I'm helping you. After seeing that you over misbehave, you have over misbehaved. And if I let you go out with a 50, it's just a pass. It's not going to help you. Do you know what I'll do? I'll give you a retake. You'll cry, you'll cry, but later you'll perform better in the next attempt. And you'll not repeat the, the mistake. Some people are awakened by, by retakes. This is what we're talking about here. Yeah? Generic skills. You have to be uh, a critical thinker. You think up. You know, if you fail the first time, you'll think better in the next attempt. Are you aware of that? You will, as a must. Uh, you'll be creative and innovative because those are the points, genetic skills. Being a critical thinker and a problem solver, being a creative person and an innovative person, being communicative. Teachers as a must, that is one skill that we must have. Know how to communicate. Do you know that all of you, if you are students, there are some students who are so close to their teachers than others. And people start even misinterpreting. 
that eh, the, 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 the way uh, uh, Annette is so close to Thomas, maybe they are moving out. They are not. It's simply that she's so communicative. Eh? She knows how to communicate when and how. You see, Mr. Uh, Thomas is so eh, annoyed for you just come rampantly. Sir, you better give me what I want. Who am I telling? You get what I'm trying to mean? But there comes Annette comes, sir, I'm, I'm sorry to disturb, enter into your time, but I know, you know, I beg humbly. Uh, there is no way you will not give Annette what she wants. But there comes Joseph. Sir, so for me, I have to do my coursework. I will say, who am I telling you, man? Eh? I'm already pissed because people get pissed up. You know that. That is known. If you are communicative, it means you know how to organize your words, how to approach who, when, and how. You get what I'm trying to mean? And there are times where you may be wanting something from a big person. And you check the mood in the office. Say, ah, let me go. Go back. You have already communicated. Yeah? Ignoring, keeping silent is communication. I have of that. After reading the mood, you say, ah, 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 you go away. Hmm? Or you come, you greet this, uh, the teacher. The teacher is not paying attention to you. Just know, even if you had come to ask for incre incremental, ah, must, if, if you give me an redo, don't ask for it. I didn't say I had just come to, to say hello to you and you go away. Wait for another time when that person is in the moods and say, ah, Madam, I, you know, I, I, I performed badly. I beg. I humbly request. You lose nothing to humble yourself. But when you humble yourself, there is a way you, you, you make the teacher's heart soft. And you'll be able to understand, okay, I understand your point. But you know you also pray a lot. We call you for this. You are in, playing in, a, in clubs and everything of that nature. But okay, I'm giving another last chance. You've won. You've lost nothing. Even if you nailed down, you've lost nothing. You are the winner. You get what I'm trying to mean? This is what we are teaching. You be communicative. You have to be very wise while communicating. How do you communicate? Before a big congregation of which age by the way if you're addressing people of responsibility man don't just un, uh, use your slangs and over know them that's what we are trying to say finally under generic skills there is being mathematical competency and IC proficiency as a must whatever you do there is mathematics like it or not even as I'm speaking I'm calculating my time I'm calculating this time saying okay time is going as you 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 write words i mean we tell you that i want to do the coursework but give me five pages uh, maybe in this and this you get it you will calculate whatever you're doing when you go to the shop to buy you calculate so you have to apply mathematics what, that's what we call the next event is cross-cutting issues you have to to know that even when you're doing luganda you have to borrow a leaf from ict you have to borrow it from English. You have to borrow. You get what I'm trying to. You are cross cutting because you cannot stand as an island in your Uganda. You cannot. Neither can you do in your English. You can't. You need to borrow a leaf maybe from mathematics, from ICT, from hmm? something of that nature. So if a student goes through this curriculum, he will be able to think critically. He will be able to be creative and innovative. He will be able to know when to communicate and not when to communicate. Then that person will be able to cooperate and be self-reliant and directed. At the same time, a person will be able to integrate other um, lessons he learns into other fields. You can be able to add some mathematics into Luganda, into geography, into history, into ICT, and also put ICT, because ICT is an enabler. All of us know that. that I can explain a pulley better using a clip in physics, I mean in ICT and so, than even when I come and draw a pulley on the blackboard. So I see how you are incorporating ICT in teaching <coughs> physics. I can put a video of Mirambo conquering the nearby societies. Students will be more excited to see a physical Mirambo. Okay, it's an image, but it's kind of physical. You get it, right? Conquering, that when you come and you strain, you know, Mirambo was very handsome and tall, very strong. Hmm? He could, what are you talking about? People prefer seeing, even if I just bring an image of Mirambo showing you, now this was Mirambo here.
trying to carry his spear. Now he's here spearing someone. He's here now sitting on his throne. People will get an image. I like the way Catholics do it. I don't know. But those images they put there, I'm an Anglican, but the truth is I like the way they do it. Those images they put there of Mary Mother, of Christ, or, you know, there is a way they, you'll get a little bit scared and so over his seeing me. <laughs> over, you get what I'm telling you? So you organize yourself and do the things right, the right way. So that is it with using videos, using images, use, you get what I'm saying, using role plays. Eh? You act it out. Get students to act out. One becomes Milamba, another new, becomes new Milamba. Students will get the image better and say, okay, that is how it was. Even when it's their fellow students who have acted it out, they, it will sink into their minds than if you just come and read, oh, you know, you know, he was very, you know, he was a very tall man, and whenever you could go in the field, he was very dangerous. You know that man was great. Oh, oh, you are wasting a lot of your time and the students' time. So it's better to become a little uh, practical. So the final part is cross-cutting issues. When you're going to teach this curriculum, you must know that there are some cross-cutting issues that you must put at heart when you are developing your activities or courseworks. Number one, environmental awareness. You should give an activity which talks about the environment, preservation of environment. You give an activity once in a while which talks about health awareness. Once in a while, you talk about an activity which has life skilling. Hmm? Imagine you are working as a market attendant. Hmm? You get it? You are making them imagine now they are market attendants. You are trying to emphasize life skills. You get it right. You, you, you are in geography, but you have incorporated in life skilling. You are in mathematics, but because you've talked about environmental awareness. For example, you say, how best, how many bottles of water must come out in a company such that the, 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 the magnitude of maybe blocking the soil profile is failed. You are putting some little environmental awareness into matter, but it's, you get it right. You phrase the question using some environmental mathematics and students are able to understand it better. So they will get the knowledge via environmental preservation, but they'll also be able to calculate. So are you seeing how you've incorporated it? Then when we go to mixed abilities and innovation, like uh, this is a mixed ability, right? you've added environment and mathematics. Then social economics challenges. As you are talking, explain using um, social challenges. For example, in this environment whereby all perishable, all, all commodities have gone high. For example, Joseph is set out to buy soap, which is at 7,000, to buy fuel, which has gone to maybe 6,000. Now, you are showing the students that the economy has gone wild. But at the same time, you are attacking prices, which they are going to add and calculate and divide and give you the answer. You have incorporated social economics into mathematics. You get what I'm trying to mean? So students will learn, and they are learning based on the day-to-day -day environment. Rather than the things of just coming, uh, Mr. Smith is a British chief in Ohio. Now, even Ohio, they will take, some of them will die without even going to Ohio. Uh, why are you using Uganda? Nkumba uh, here, Nkumba Bukorwa, Nkumba Bufuru. You get what I'm trying to do. People know those areas. There is a man called maybe Sebufu in Kumba Mufuru. He had layers, this and this and this. You are helping the students of Kumba to understand it clearly because you are using a man that you know. You get what I'm trying to mean? Exactly. So, um, and citizen and patriotism, okay, that one is always coming up. So, to summarize what I've been talking about, all of us ignore the preliminaries or the first pages. But in this time, in this curriculum, we intended it to put in the first pages those key issues to, to look out for. Number one we put out for you to look out for was the key learning outcomes. We, we abbreviate them as KLOs, key learning outcomes. Then the next were the values. We call them sometimes core values. Then the next one are generic skills. And the final ones were cross-cutting issues. I've told you all those four major areas. 
must be incorporated in what you are helping students to teach, to learn. You find a way of incorporating them. By the way, some of them, even if you don't do it, it comes automatically. I don't know whether you see it. Some questions you set them, automatically they bring out cross-cutting issues. Automatically they bring out economic, uh, I mean they bring out um, values. Some, automatically, it does it. So, but a good teacher, you can aim at that. Now, the other part that I don't want to look at so much is the real syllabus. Starting from... Um, From page, uh, from page 10 to 11, they are just talking about the rationale because every book has a rationale. The importance of this curriculum is the, the, the rationale. And in that, in that rationale, uh, they explain to us uh, very well why they adopted this kind of, of curriculum. You will read it by yourselves. I won't read it for you to understand that. My major aim is to go to, to, to page, uh, the page that you have, I don't know, the page which has the real syllabus being laid out, whereby they start showing you exactly what to do. I want us to look on your first page of the syllabus. There are things I want us to, to learn or to check. That all syllabi the pool of syllabus. All syllabi that you have must be having what I'm going to talk about. All your syllabi must be having the term. All your syllabi must be having the themes. These things I'm talking about, some of them were not in the old curriculum. The old curriculum did not have themes. But this new curriculum, all of them that you have, in fact, these are syllabi now, eh? Uh, because at first we did not mention a curriculum. A curriculum is the, the totality of what you have to cover in a given program for a given period of time. The totality of what you have to cover in a given program for a given period of time. People who are doing mathematics, you have a full syllabi learning from... Okay, let me use O-level. The O-level curriculum for... The O-level curriculum has all subjects... Subject combinations, you get it, it has mathematics, blah, blah, blah. that is the full curriculum. But you cannot study curriculum, you study your particular syllabus, you get it right. So a curriculum is not studied, you cannot study curriculum, you follow a curriculum but you don't study the whole, you get a particular syllabi. In university, they are, they, 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 it's what we call the, the, the course outlines. You have a course outline for, because the whole curriculum is Bachelor of Arts with Education curriculum, not so. But that Bachelor of Arts with the Education Curriculum has several subjects, what? Combinations. So for you, you go for your particular subject combination. In second, we call it a syllabus. In, at the university, you call it a course outline or course structure for your particular course. You get it right. So those who are doing English, you'll have yours. You are not going to use that for those people who are doing math, mathematics. But you are all doing the same program or under the same curriculum of Bachelor of Arts with Education. Finally, on your transcript, there will come that you've gotten a degree in Bachelor of Arts with Education, majoring in English, double main. You get it, right? Majoring in mathematics and physics. You get it, right? Majoring, but you also did under the curriculum of Bachelor of Arts with Education. And others, Bachelor of Sciences with Education. So the curriculum is the totality of what is entailed in a particular program. You get it right. The totality of what is entailed in a particular program. Then the subject, what we call the syllabi, is that particular mm, information or matter that you have to study in your small program. You get it. For me, I'm for, for English. For me, I'm for something of that nature. So if you hear me talk about syllabi, curriculum, we always prefer the syllabus because it's what we are going to follow as we for math, as we for English, as we for, for geography. Like that, like that. So, I was telling you to open and check on the first page. There are things that are so crucial that you must go out knowing. The things I'm talking about, you may not see the relevance right now. But you cannot interpret these books. Even if you are dying, you will not interpret them when you don't know this. You have to first know this to interpret. Because what is here is going to be reflected in that book. 
I was talking about this. We are seeing senior one term one, that is okay, it was even in the other book, but there is what we call the theme. The theme is the general knowledge area. You get it right. A theme is a general knowledge area. In one theme, there may be like three topics, it's possible. You get it? Because the other is just a knowledge area. In one theme, there may be like three topics. The opposite is not true. In one theme, there may be like three topics. The opposite is not true. Are we together? Um, so, after having the theme, for example, for me, um, I told you that I teach ICT. So, the syllabi I have, the syllabus I have here is for ICT. The first theme is called computer systems. But under computer systems, we have a topic one is called introduction to ICT. So, immediately after the theme, there it has to be followed by a a topic. You get it right? So here we have computer system as the theme. Under computer system we have topic number one under that theme is introduction to ICT. But you see if you go to the next page <coughs> the theme remains the same as computer systems but there is another topic called computer hardware and system startup. Then when you go to the next to the next page, the theme has changed. So meaning that the first theme called computer system had two topics under it. So a theme is a knowledge area, a wide knowledge area. But a topic, those are the specific areas that you want to touch in that theme. You get it? That under the theme of computer systems, I want us to look at topic called introduction to ICT. So you should be having the knowledge or you should be able as a teacher to look for guiding questions. Your role here is to look for guiding questions. Guys, I'm begging you and I'm repeating this. Don't look for notes unless you're looking for notes for yourself just to equip yourself. Look for guiding questions and guiding scenarios. Because uh, imagine a topic like introduction to ICT. When I want my students to understand that topic under the theme of computer systems, I'm not supposed to go and look for notes. I see this call this and this. Hey, no, I see. No. Those notes may be mine. It's okay, let me have it as a teacher, as a lecturer. But to help you, I'll go and look for guiding questions. For example, I say now, if I want a student to go and research and know what ICT is, which few activities should I put there? We call them activities. You're going to hear me talk about activities. Activities are guiding questions. Hmm? But in this new curriculum, we call them activities. But those are guiding questions or tasks. We call them tasks, guiding tasks. tasks. So I'll go and say, which, which questions can I put ahead to help this student to go and research more about introduction to ICT? I can just get, for example, this. And the questions, sometimes I may make them direct or indirect. I can write a simple question and say, imagine you have been chosen to introduce the newcomers of S1 to ICT. How best will you approach it? Simple. Imagine you have been chosen to introduce the newcomers of S1 to ICT. How best will you approach it? That question is so pregnant. It has a lot. It's not only telling you to, to, to look for the definition of ICT, but it's challenging you, making you to critically think that ah, if I was the one in S1, how would I wish a teacher to introduce to me what ICT is? You get it right. Now, this one gives a student liberty, a student teacher now, let me say student teacher or even a student in, in, when you go to second For me, I'm speaking to a student teacher. For you, you'll be student, speaking to learners in, in second you get it. This gives a learner, and to me, it gives a chance to a student teacher to think that, what if I start by bringing a video hmm, talking about the different, I mean, talking about what I see to this. Another one will say, what if 
These are students, by the way, these are students' ideas. Students have ideas. You like it when you're teaching the confidence based curriculum. Students who have ideas that you don't think, you, you, you have never thought of. For you, maybe think about a video, a student will come to class with his bag full of a computer that you don't need. But it says, for me, this is how I approach it. I'll come with the student who come, a student did this, came with a bag full of a computer, but all dismantled. And also came to the computer lab and asked us for a lab, and for a computer. He put it there. He told the new people, before we do anything, it's all about introducing ICT. Then he came with the radios, he came with a lot of things in the bag. They allowed me because he explained that. I'm bringing this, we have uh, a class that we're going to have to teach, I mean to, 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 to present. So he came with the radios, came with phones, came with iPads, came with a lot of things in the bags. He had two bags. Then he came and said, this is how best I will and had something a little written. Now, <clears throat> he set a radio, started singing, like you're hearing the radio singing there. Uh, he had an iPad, uh, he, he, he got a, a small video and played it there. Um, he had, a, what do you call them, these uh, phones, yeah? he made a call there and then class. Not doing anything, but putting on music, put on music and music and he made a call to a friend there and uh, Call him because we gave him we gave, we gave him the floor. He could have interrupt. He said, "Okay, let's see what the boy is doing." Then he, he got the computer. One of his friends went and started typing because it was a group work. Eh? Started typing as the projector is showing. Eh? Then after he had a router, like a small a, 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 a mic, and connected to internet, and requested for my email and sent me. That document that we have had. Then from there, he said, Sir, I think this is the best way I would introduce ICT. And he ended there. He said, You man, are you sober? He said, No. Let the class tell us what they are. Let them explain what they are. We saw him making the phone call. We saw him putting on the radio. We saw him. And that is it, ICT. ICT is the incorporation of um, communication technology into information. Technology, the opposite is wrong. Integrate, in, incorporate uh, communication technology into information. Technology. When you call up, talk about communication, you're talking about phones. Eh? Then you incorporate them into the, the information technology, which is the uh, computers and things of that nature. And indeed, he did it because he made calls, he connected to Wi Fi and then managed, I mean, to the, the modem and managed to send. That was all in, integrating, I mean, incorporating inform, communication technology into information technology. I said, no, that is the information technology, information technology, in order to make communication successful. And then everyone laughed and then questions came. Now, what do you mean? When you had a phone call, yes, that is all ICT. You get it right. Now, what about the radio? That, that is also an ICT. What about the, 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 the iPad? That is also ICT. The man, the man explained that. Everyone laughed and they were happy. The, this just was done. But as I a teacher, I didn't think about that. And that was not going to be my approach. I guarantee you that was not my approach. But students understood it. Better. So when we are handling this curriculum, it's all about your role is to understand the topic. Go back and look for guiding tasks to the students. Leave it to them. I'm guaranteeing you students will do you justice. They will give you the best of their ability. Now, your role will be just to come in and guide them little by little, little by little, little by little, where they are going wrong. Because, you know, those things happen. You guide them little by little, and, and in the end, you have the best product. So, out of those groups, in addition to what you may come to sum up with, you'll get the best information for the students. And those students will understand. They will understand very well. Are we together? Good. Now. After knowing, thank you, after knowing this, the topic, after knowing, uh, no, 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 I beg your pardon. After knowing the theme, because that is one thing that is supposed to be in the, 
in the, in, the, in the syllabus, but you'll find it in the learner's book and also in the teacher's guide. What is here is copied and pasted in the learner's book and the teacher's guide. The, the competence will be there, the, the topic will be there, I mean, I beg your pardon, the theme will be there, the topic will be there. Now the competency, I think this competence is written with Y, not E, because I told you the one with E involves doing. You get it right. Now here, this is their expectation that if you are competent enough, this is what you have to display. You get it right? So the competence for the first topic is the learner understands, and this is how it's stated. It's stated as if whatever you're going to see, even in the teacher's books, even in the syllabus, talks to the student and the teacher. You get it right? Hear it here. The learner understands the concept of ICT and the related terminologies, its benefits, and the required safety precautions. So meaning that by the end of this topic, a learner is expected to understand the concept ICT. He's also expected to know the related terminologies of ICT, because you don't know, it's not only ICT, you have to know all other terminologies. Then from there, you should know the benefits of ICT and the safety precautions. How best can you handle ICTs? ICT are those, ICTs are those gadgets, all gadgets that we use for communication. You get it? How best can we handle them? Do you know other terminologies? If we talk about ICT in general, uh, when I talk about a computer, do you understand it? When I talk about a computer system, do you understand it? When I talk about an ATM machine, those are ICTs now. Do you understand it? When I talk about a fuel, a fueling, Machine, that is an ICT. Do you understand it? You get it? Can you explain to it? I mean, uh, it to the people? So this is what they expect you to have here. In fact, they go ahead and break it. Because here they say, a competence, because I'm explaining this to you, a competence longer learning outcomes. Brothers and sisters, in this so-called new curriculum, I told you it's not a new curriculum, these are reforms. But we've baptized it a new curriculum. So let's go with that. But you know it that these are reforms. So in this so-called new curriculum, after setting the competence, the expectation from you, a student, hmm, we go ahead to break them in simpler portions. Here, these learning outcomes, we no longer have the word objectives because objectives are to the teacher. Learning outcomes are to the student. I repeat this, that is the major difference between objectives and the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are to be displayed by the learner. You get it right? Well, objectives are the set targets by the teacher that by the end of this session, I mean that by the end of this topic, I should make sure that students must know this and this and this and this. But the learner, his task will be that by the end of this lesson, I must have learned. You get what I'm trying to say? So that's why I'm saying objectives are to the teacher. It's my role to make sure that you learn how by preparing those activities for, for you or tasks for you. Now for you also, it's your role and obligation to make sure that you learn because that is your learning out. You get it right. So here, this syllabus is purely developed for the student, not for the teacher. My role here is guidance. That's why you see we are putting here the word learning outcomes, not object objectives. So we are saying that for a student to achieve this competency, he must follow these learning outcomes bit by bit. Number one learning outcome, explain the concept of ICT. Because the first, if you remember our definition that the student should understand the concept of ICT and the later terminologies, its benefits and the required safety precautions. So here we are breaking them down. Number A, a learner should be able to explain the concept ICT and the related terminologies. B, the student should be able to know. Now you are going to ask me, when we are studying, or when our teachers told us that there is no objective like knowing or understanding the truth. But if it's a learning outcome, it's there. You as a student, you have a task to understand. But me, who is setting an objective? I have no obligation. I cannot even predict that you'll understand. You get it what you get what, what I'm trying to mean. 
My object, I cannot say that my objective is to make sure that students understand. I don't have the ability. Why? But I just come and teach. So it's, the onus is on you to make efforts to understand. You get what I'm going to do. So you'll never see an objective which says that. Objective one, to understand, it's impossible. But an objective which says, I mean, a learning outcome which says to understand or to know, it's right. Why? Because now the ball is in the owner's hands. Now you are a student, you get it right. You have the right to understand or to know. You get it. You can make all the effort. But if it's an objective, it's impossible. Because I'm the teacher to move that objective. Can I force you to learn? I cannot. Do you know that? You can be here, but when you're already in the club taking some alcohol, but in emotions, eh? Uh, you can be here, but when you're somewhere in the, in the dormitory or in the, in the hostel, remembering the, the, the thigh of the chicken you left there. I'm here wasting my day, but you are there. You get what I'm waiting for. So I cannot determine your ability to understand or to know. But I, you, as you, since they are learning outcomes, you can determine your ability to know. That's why we are saying part B that the student should be able to know the common ICT tools and they are used in various ways. You, you are able because the ball is in your hands. C, you should be able to use various ICT tools. Mm. D, you should, be, you should be able to appreciate the safety precautions for the different ICT tools. Now, all these that I'm talking about, if you check the syllabi that you have, in brackets, they have letters KU. Are you seeing there? Check the syllabi. These learning outcomes that I'm talking about, in brackets they have KU, others have KUV, others have SV. Now, those ones take us to the other major issues I talked about. That when we are going to be teaching in a competence based curriculum, there are four to five things we are aiming at. We are aiming at a student's knowledge, understanding, values, attitude, and skills. We shorten it as KUSVA. For us, when we are teaching this, we call it KUSVA. So it's not true that each objective must have all those that in objective one, there should be an knowledge, understanding, value, uh, attitude you cannot. But one, because the competence is big, in one objective or in one first learning outcome, you may be having knowledge and skills, not so. Because let me see, the first objective was explain the concept. There, there is only knowledge and understanding. Because in the explanation, is there any skill? Yes, okay, but the skill is, is maybe use of English. But the major issue there is knowledge and understanding. The moment you understand what ICT is, you are able to explain it. Not so. That's why you are saying that the first task is explain the concept of ICT and its related terminologies. The best that you can achieve from there is knowledge and understanding. But when you go to two, which is they should be able to know common ICT tools and their uses in various uh, fields. There you have to have the knowledge of what a camera is. Not so. When you have the knowledge, then you will understand it. Not clear? But all along you may be seeing that, but you're not so sure. But if you come close to it, you say, okay, now I've got, okay, this button does this, now you're getting the knowledge and the understanding. And then the values. Now, in the third one, use of various ICTs. Now, the moment something involves use, it means a skill has to come in. The way I'm teaching you here, this is how you're going to set your, your tasks when you're interfacing with your students in S1, S2, F3. Because by the time you go, no, no, it will be S1, S2. Next year, F3 is joining. The other year, S4 is joining, like that. So, when you're given those classes most schools we are fearing to give school some stu uh, institutions which did not train but any institution we trained they gave them and the students did the right thing so listen clearly you'll be able to teach this don't fear at all so when anything involves use or an application then it means what a student is going to benefit mostly is their skill so as you are setting your tasks you should set a task which will provoke students to operate, to, to, to apply, to get it right. Then finally, ap appreciate uh, the safety precautions for the different ICT tools. Are you, are you hearing the way that learning outcome is set? 
appreciate the safety. There it means that a lot of understanding and values and attitudes are here. Because if you are to appreciate, you must have an attitude somewhere, a good attitude, don't so? Then again, if you are to appreciate, there must be some values you must have learned. If you learn the values of the teachers, you appreciate teachers. I aware of that. But if you don't learn the values of teachers, you may say, are these teachers right now, the teachers, are the way they do their things. Many teachers are not poor, no one should lie to you. Teachers have the money, even more than those people who think they have the money. That is it. For me, I know that all the people I know, myself, I'm not poor. And I don't think any of those teachers here are, are poor. They are not. So, it's all about the attitude and knowing how to play around with the resources you have, then you'll be able to make it. Check it out. You'll see it doing so. The moment anything has to appreciate, learn how to, you get, the moment it has that word of appreciating, you, you are going to go into the values and attitude. So it completes our five key areas we talked about. Knowledge, understanding, values, attitude, and skills. And I'm repeating this. Not all outcome, not each outcome will take all the five. But at least, eh, you can take one up to one up, you get it right. And in the end, the whole competence will cover all the five. But when they are distributed. Are we together? Any question from there? Because now I'm crossing. I'm not going to go to any other topic. I'm crossing from a syllabus to a teacher's guide. You can, even if we didn't go through, but I've gone through it. I've gone through it. Uh, you can take us a little bit up there. A little bit up there. Go back on, on slide number. Go back a little bit. Uh, there, 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 there. No, come back. Uh -huh. no, 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 go down. Go down, go down, continue. There. See? Go back to number four. Mm, let me see. Uh -uh, no, that is not it. Go, go to number seven, down. Hmm? Where there is that. Uh, no, 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 continue. Continue. No, no, where there is a, an image. Where there is an image. Uh -huh, that, that, that image. So this is the image we've been talking about. You can put it in slide. For, say current, from current, from current there. Um, <clears throat> exactly this is what I've been explaining. I think now, oh. Now this one is learning the more by the way he's applying. I am aware of that. By the time he finishes, he will be the best here. Go to current, uh, from current slide, from current slide, from current slide. Press it, good. So now, this is exactly what I've been explaining, that each page that you are going to see will be having that. Uh, it will be having a theme. Uh, they forgot a theme here. We forgot putting a theme, but it will be having a theme. Then after theme, it will be having a topic. From a topic, it will have a competency. From a competency, it will be having the learning outcomes bro uh, broken down. Then it will be have suggested learning activities. These are the ones that I've been telling you to, that you will be able to make your own learning outcomes. You as a teacher, but in the books they are provided. But why do we want all these teachers to make? Sometimes you may use the book activities, but sometimes they may not be applying to your setting. I'm teaching students of Kabla Maido, but the, the worthy thing is, eh, I'm sorry if your village is Kabla Maido, but let me use that. Eh? Uh, the, 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 the information in here is purely town setting. Now, if you go to Kabla Maido, I've ever been there, and you're talking to those people, hmm? you are talking about here hey, iPads, iPhones, man, 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 man. Say, so watch out, because you are talking abstract science to them. So you start with common things. A radio. Do you think in Kabul Maida they don't have radios? They do. I've been there. TV, at least in the neighborhood, after five houses, there is one who has a what? A television. Then You get what I'm trying to mean? A computer, it's rare, but at least in the, in the town center there is a computer. But iPads, mama, they are very rare. You get what I'm trying to mean? So those are, don't, don't bring things they do. After them knowing the common things, eh? Later, you can bring in those hmm, layer, layer things eh? and even go to the, to the internet and show them what an iPad is. That, like you see a computer, an iPad is similar to that, but this one is smaller. Now they are bringing them back home. Eh? So, okay, 
yeah, that is what they talk about. Hey, you get what I'm trying to mean. You are teaching from known to unknown. But when, in fact, when you are making your suggested learning activities to guide a particular topic, make sure that you make it local. Hmm? You make, you use local material, you use local examples. Then from there, you can be able to uplift. You are, okay, now let me use uh, my village. Maybe I may have used the, the Dini's <laughs> village. Let me use my village. Uh, Masaka, yeah, I'm from Masaka, particularly Cabo Yo. But the, part, the bad thing is it's town. It's a little bit more of a, ta of a town setting. But now let me use it. When you go to Cabo Yo there, I guarantee you, my village, I know it very well. <laughs> very few people have even gone to Kenya. Now for you, say, you know, seas, you know, seas and oceans. For you who have not traveled, for us who have traveled, man, oh man, you are making those students feel inferior and tired of, every, of everything you're talking about. You know, those seas have deep waters. Man, start from known. Ask them, how many of you have ever seen wells, springs, eh? swamps? Those things are common at our village. We all have swamps, you get it? Eh? We have ponds, eh? ponds. They all put up their hands. Say, uh-huh, now after. Eh? Do you see the water in the ponds? Yes. Those are small water bodies. You get it right. But as you go overseas or out of the country, they are bigger water bodies. Like lakes. How many of you have ever seen? Yeah, they are there at, at, at whatever we have ever near. We have seen it. Eh? You get it right. Now, you see a lake, then there are bigger water bodies like more than even what? Lakes. They are like 6 to 10 to 12 times. Are you sure that yes, they are called oceans? You get what I'm talking about? Now, you are drawing them from the known. Now, a person will be able to put six lakes into an ocean. Say, okay, you want to mean an ocean can swallow six lakes? You say, eh, even six are very little. It can swallow 20. You say, they now got an, they will get an, imagi an imagination that is an ocean is big and deep. You get it right. Then from there, you start talking about your mathematics. It's like 700 feet down. They say, oh, we are, we are dead. It's like whatever, whatever feet wide. Now you are helping them. You started from the known to unknown. They are equating an ocean to seven or 700 lakes. You get what I'm to mean? They are happy with you, but some of you blab. For the last you've traveled. How many of you have ever been to America? You even know that they have never even gone to, to Kampala. How many of you have ever been to America? Why mocking people? How many of you, you, you are bad, you are very bad even. You are very bad teacher. Let us start from known to un. How many of you have ever been to, to Nyendo? Because Nyendo is near Masaka. They will put up the hand. You see those good buildings, eh? Then you say, now when you go to Kenya, there are buildings which are better than those six times. You want to mean suddenly there is even that one which is better, better than Club Ambias? Ah, Ambias is nothing. <laughs> when you go, now they will imagine. They say, if at all we thought Ambias is good, now you are saying it's nothing. What are you talking about? You said the other one. It will make even the most ugly very beautiful. You get it? So they will wonder and they will, they will learn well drawing an image from what they know to what they don't know. That is competence best. Are we there? You are giving them a chance to imagine as if they know what they are studying, yet they don't know what they are studying. You give them a chance to be as if they have also go, ever gone to America, if they have never gone to America. So after explaining from known, you can bring like a video. People, videos are not very expensive. You can put on even one GB of data and download. If you don't have electricity in Kaboyo, because I know some school, our primary school there at Kaboyo Church of Uganda doesn't have electricity. But I can come with my laptop very well charged. Hmm? No projector because you don't have it. And I move the Kavid or call them to sit close. It's okay, Corona is no longer very effective. We can handle it with our COVID X. Eh? So you, you bring them near with your COVID X ne next because you have to be with the COVID X to, to handle it. So you bring them near and they watch hmm, how a sea eh, looks like. You get it? Maybe if a rock is producing magma, they see how a rock is. You get it? Those students will be as if they have been there. 
It was like I was in one of the schools there. They told me, sir, for us, we've never even gone for field work. They were saying, field work, one thing we did, I donated the full camp folder like that one to them. Let's put back in Kaboy, our home. Now, I told them, I want you to hire an ICT teacher to go to those areas that you want. You pay, and they explain everything to him as he's recording. Then after, he will bring back the good thing the secondary school has a what? Uh, electricity. They put curtains in there, and students do field work from school. But remember, they have recorded everything. They play it and students be as if they are in the field. That is the only the cheapest way of doing it. Where students will where would you spend five millions, you spend only one million or six hundred. Hire only one specialist to go in the field. They record everything. They bring a real because those are HD. These are HD cameras, uh, camcorders. They can record something like as if it's happening exactly. So even the sound, you even if it's a it's a bad crying, you hear it. So the technology has taken us to that level. Don't deny people chance and claim, for me, I'm teaching a, a village school. What are you talking about? We've taught in village schools better than yours. <laughs> if you thought your village is better, ours is worse, maybe. So we've taught there, and students have learned. So this competence-based curriculum has come to eliminate such challenges. Involve those students themselves. They will do for you wonders. You'll wonder. They'll do for you wonders. So. What you've seen, or what you've been talking about in this syllabus, if you open your teacher, your, your lesson plan books, I don't mind whether you have, because when you are going to teach, after making this syllabus, or syllabi, we follow them with two tools, major tools. There is what we call a teacher's guide. This teacher's guide is a booklet which interprets all topics from the, diff uh, okay, let me use syllabus, mine now, ICT. It is interpreting each topic as we set it. It interprets it open. Page one comes, the pages may differ because of the amount of content in here. But everything, if the competence was saying that, uh, the learner understands the concept of ICT and the related terminologies, its benefits and the required safety precautions. I guarantee you, they are going to dismantle everything. They are going to define what ICT is. They are going to, uh, to define other terminologies of different ICTs. They are going to go ahead and give the benefits of ICTs. They are going to go ahead and tell you how safe you can keep the ICTs. That is the, world, the role of teacher's guide. Why did we spoon feed a teacher and not, we did not do it for a learner? If you go in the learner's book, it's similarly following the, the syllabus because it has also the feel like a teacher. The teacher's book open them. They have themes like the syllabus has. They also have topics like the syllabus has. They have uh, competence like the syllabus has. They have learning outcomes like the syllabus has. But the difference is here. In the learner's book, we don't explain any, 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 any terminology. We just put there guiding tasks. We put there questions or examples. Like the, the one I told you that we can. Uh, let me read first one. Yeah. I use ICT. Uh, when you get these books, we call this one a chapter page. A chapter page must be has an image, or a, 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 we call it an image, which can tell, help a student even know what you're teaching about, talking about, before reading anything. Because if you look at this image, you can see that these are ICTs, not so. So these topical pictures or images are not by mistake. You cannot just pick in a picture and you put it there. We shall say you are wrong. You have to bring a picture which is going to reflect exactly the topic. ICTs. Are you saying that these are all ICTs? Here is an iPad, here is a data, here is a laptop, here is cloud, here is... These are all ICTs. And indeed the first topic is introduction to ICT. So every, every chapter image reflects what the topic is talking about. In the, in, in, in the, in the, in the, in the, you're going to see something different that in the, open for me, read in between the teacher's uh, link in between the teacher's I mean the learner's book and the syllabus. Yeah. So you're going to see there is a difference that when you come to the syllabus, what they call a topic in the book becomes a chapter. That is the major difference. What they call a topic in the syllabus 
in the teacher's book and the learner's guide is called a what? A chapter. Why? We thought books rhyme very well with the word chapter than, than topic. So, uh, So, you get it. Here in the syllabus, we call it a topic, but in the book, we call it a, a chapter. Because books have chapters. However, word topic and chapter are used synonymously. You can change them. Eh? You can interchange them. You can use them interchangeably. They can work. When you open And one thing again I want you to understand clearly that in the chapter page there is an introduction. And in that introduction, hmm, because you are going to ask me that, here we are not, you talked about in the in the in the syllabus there is a there is a theme. The theme is here. In this forgot here themes. In computer they, they forgot to put their themes. But they must be there. In other books you see so you are seeing themes, don't so? In other books, we are seeing things, not so. Are we together, my students? In your other books, we are seeing themes, as you saw them here. The theme here, I saw it, it was computer systems. Even here, the theme would be computer systems. The topic here is introduction to ICT. Here, the chapter number, because I told you the topic turns into a chapter. That's it. Become introduction to ICT. Now, you are going to ask me, where is the competence? The competence is hidden. But it's hidden in the introduction, in the introductory words. Each chapter has an introductory part. So, under introduction here, the competence is there. So, why did we hide it? We need a student to read and relate what is in the teacher's book, in the, 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 the learner's book, to the syllabus. Can you read and also look for the competence? You can. Because when I read in the introduction here, they are saying that in this chapter, the learner we we'll learn about the meaning of ICT and appreciate its various applications in the daily life. Indeed, this is summarizing the, the competence. Because the competence here is wider than they say, the learner will understand ICTs. Isn't it the same as that? In this chapter, the learner will learn about the meaning of ICT and other terminologies and then appreciate its various applications. You get it right? Because here they say, the learner understands the concept of ICT and other terminologies and its benefits, because that's why here they are saying and appreciates its various applications. Those are the benefits. And finally, be able to appreciate, I mean, to, to keep it safe. So, the concept, I mean, the competence will come but hidden in the introduction. In all your books, the competence is the introduction. Whether it's geography, whether it's math, whether it's what, the competence is reflected in the introduction. It's not clear. So if you think you are going to look for the competence, anyway, you will not see it. Until when you go into the introduction, as you read, you will hear someone saying in this chapter. As you read, uh, you remember, I mean, you see the words that in this chapter, so and so and so, the other and the other, you get it. That is the only way you'll be able to see it. So as you're opening these books, Brothers and sisters, mm, just go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, go, go, go back, go back, um, go back up. Just press in the space, press in the space. Here, you see, around this around here, there is an arrow. They say you come to the end here. Behind that arrow, use those arrows. They will help you go back up. Just go, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, come now. We are linking between the syllabus and the learner's book. Now let me show it uh, to you from the projector. Mm -hmm. mm. Now we are seeing here that we are saying that. Participants should be able to identify the features and structures of a learner's book mm, that rhyme with the syllabus. Mm. So you have to link 
the, the features of the learner's book to those of the syllabus. That is what we've been doing. I've told you that whatever is in the syllabus is in the learner's book. We go to the next slide. Now, we gave, I, I, I was planning for an activity, but I'm going to reduce the activities because I know we don't have enough time. Now, I was saying that in your groups, with reference to the learner's book and the syllabus, identify the key features of the learner's book, but we've identified them. They are the theme, hmm? uh, the, 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 the chapter. Now, because they are in the syllabus, it's the topic, but here it becomes the chapter. Then the competence, and after all, the competence is hidden in the intro, introduction. Are we there? Then finally, the learning outcomes. Those are the major features. I've said it starts with the theme. It's in the syllabus. It's also in the learner's book. Then it goes to the topic in the syllabus, but here it becomes the chapter. Then finally, I mean, after that, it goes to the competency. There it's open. There you see it clearly. But here it's hidden in the introduction, in the, in the learner's book and the teacher's guide. Then finally, you look at the learning outcomes those ones are always open and i told you this or oh, i'm repeating it the learning outcomes break down the competency that is it even if you don't tell me the competence but you give me the learning outcomes i know the competence because it's obvious and anywhere the learning outcomes break down the competence so if you add it together you'll know that okay the competence was as long as this we go to the next slide we don't share. We shall not. I'll tell you where we're going to do group work. Um, if you check the syllabus, we had this program planner. I think you saw it on the. For me, uh, I see it on page twelve. I don't know yours, but the program planner. So the program planner breaks down how the whole book is going to be, or the whole syllabus is going to be, because it tells you. It tells you the themes. It tells you the topic, and it tells you the period. Now, what I didn't talk about, because I've talked about the themes, I've talked about the topic, but I've not talked about the period. When we are writing this syllabus, I'm sorry I said when we were because I was part of it. When we are writing this syllabi, we thought of some teachers who come and spend a lot of time or less time on a topic. Do you know that a teacher, like I told you, the attitude is very crucial. Do you know that a teacher can go in a class and doesn't teach or doesn't help students to learn? just brings other KB all together. Eh? They talk about unidentified things and the time is gone. You get what I'm saying? So for us, what we did, we guided them, we said, we expect you to do this and this. In 12, in 12 periods, you get it? So there is no way you will default. You, you must, and even the, the students have the, the, the books which are stipulating that. They will remind you that, hey, but teacher, this one has to take this and this. Then you will see how you will not do it. You will do it. So, we are helping the lazy teachers. <laughs> I'm sorry to mention, but it's the truth. The lazy teachers, eh, to do the right thing. That's why we went so, so hard to, I mean, so, so specific even to give you periods. That is spoon feeding a teacher, by the way. But that is the only way to go if we want to get the best out of our teachers. So this is the breakdown that each and every item is given the number of periods we, we expect now. The number of periods, I mean, periods vary. Some schools have 45 minutes, others 40 minutes. I don't think there is any school which has 30. 40, 40 standard. Eh? Some others pull it to 45. Eh? So if they say four periods, it means that a topic called introduction or introducing will take four periods. Those are many hours. You will wonder, what are you doing in those, to introduce for, for because those are uh, is, if they are 40, 40, those are, those are four periods. Those are 160 something hours. Non -so, um, uh, no, uh, hours, I think. Non -so. You wonder how will you do that? Those are four periods. Just introducing. Yes. Those days when we were the ones reading out for students, it would even take one period. Non -so. But nowadays you have to set tasks. You have groups which are going to present. Group one may present today and group two. Then group three, four, five, six will present in those other periods. Why do we want students to present? We need to hear their views. We have been letting students who are bright, or those students who are not shy, because by the way, it doesn't mean that by putting up your hand you are bright. It's not true. It's just that you have self-confidence. 
There are even some bright students who are very shy and they don't even, some of them are introverts, others don't want to share. Are you aware of that? So, by putting them in groups, by force they have to share. Sometimes you use groups of five, six, seven, depending on your class. Other times you use think pairs. Other times you use think pairs. Think pairs, you couple them, you put them together. In two people, three people, why? You always want to get the weaknesses and strength of individuals. Whenever you think pairs, we want to get weaknesses and strength of individuals. Because giving individual, individual work may be hard. A, a class may be of 70. When will you finish? But in think pairs or groups of 10, 7, you can finish up the, the whole class discussion. And if you put them in groups, you will know even, even individual contributions. I told you how. When they come back, you call the secretary. Because you, when we are making groups, we have secretaries and the chairperson. You call them and say, mm-hmm. Now, it was a group of ten. Tell us. What did Jonathan do? What did Edina do? What did Noelin do? What did All of you talk about it by the yourself. Noelin told us, what did you do? Sir, for me, I was, uh, I was told to look for the precautions, health precautions of this, and I did it. How did you do it? Uh, this and this and this and this. Uh-huh, your work is done. Joseph, what did you do? For me, I was on finding the definition of ICT. Mm -hmm. And what did you find? This and this and the other and the other. Good. Uh, for me, I'm knowing, knowing what they, like that. They will all give your contribution. There is no way they will know. All of them will contribute. And there you are helping to build their self esteem. And doctors have seen this happen because we've been inspecting schools. I've seen it happen to some, but the truth is, it happens better in first world schools who have facilities. These schools which are down are still struggling, but we are looking for all situ uh, ways of doing it and helping them out there to do it. But first world schools have been doing it, and even moderate schools have been doing it. Uh, they give chance to these students to go and do their research from wherever they do it. Then they come and share. Those students go and do research. And they, they, they have now competition, health competition. Our group has to, uh, you know, in that way, students have become even brighter. People, HMs are telling you that students now can express themselves, even on assembly. If you choose him to come and lead prayers, those days you see them, but nowadays, immediately, the moment you call them, they come, because that's the order of the day. They are talking before the public. They know how to research. You even tell them, you people, I don't know why and the, 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 there is a lot of hooliganism. I want all of you to go and research about this. You see S1s and S, S2s, I will be the number ones to give you information that I think, I think, because now they are used to that teaching style. Just a few, one, two, three same, uh, times they have done it. They are used to it. And they don't, even when you go to class, teachers were giving us feedback. When you go to class and you want to dominate, say, Sir, I can add on something a little about what you're talking about. They take over the class. So they are it's you to control and tell them, ah, no, no, now you will bring your contribution later. The things of that. As a teacher, you have your modulator. You know when to allow them and not to allow them. So what am I trying to mean? We are not dictating for you those periods simply because we are wiseacres. But we are giving chance to all students to be able to get a chance to contribute. Either as groups, uh, in groups or as individuals. And I know if you see your lecturers here doing the same, I'm sure and pretty sure our lecturers are going to start teaching in that way. If they are to help you, the more they will continue giving you these notes directly, they are not going to help you because you are going to reach down there, you are going to suffer. But if they always set you to go out and research, research, for them they get, tell you like, I want you to use this book from page 6 to, to 9. Why do we guide them? If you don't guide them, students, these students are still a little young. They may over meander and even go to unauthentic material. Because there is, Wikipedia has everything, but Wikipedia is not the best site. That is a, a self-made site that anyone can put there anything. They are more authentic sites. So if I'm a teacher, I'll tell you I'm a more authentic site. Eh? But go to this site and check page this and this or this book. Or download this book, check page this and this. I've guided you. That is what we call guided research. I tell you, go to the village and ask all the elderly ladies who are in the range of these and these years about the war of Amin and Obote. I won't tell you to go and ask people of 25, 30. They don't know. They are not eyewitnesses. But if I tell you, I have told you, go to your village and ask people ranging from 50 to 
I know why I'm telling you. But if I just tell you, go and ask in your village uh, about the war. I mean, you go and ask your brother who is 10 years. <laughs> and the brother will start lying to you. you, know, you, you but I tell you people, I know that have the right information. And they'll give you the information. We go down. So there we are just, the, 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 the table you see there is just showing you the topic is like that, the theme is like that. We expect you to teach it in this time. Let's hurry to the next, the next, the next. Now, <clears throat> this one is more or less the same, showing you in details that we have. We are on the topic called exploring the nature and the natural environment, eight periods, and this is it. And it's self-explanatory. I think you can see it. But I want you to look so hard and I mean so clearly at the suggested learning activities. These suggested learning activities rhyme very well with the expected learning outcomes. I don't know whether you are seeing it. For example, the first one is saying, A is saying, the first, the A outcome is saying, explore the natural environment to arouse artistic instincts. And in there we expect skills, knowledge, understanding. You get it, right? So, when we come here in uh, suggested learning activities, it's me now the teacher. Now the, the suggested learning outcome, that is where the teacher, by the way, the teachers have to do more research and the preparation, because you have to put question tasks, yeah, which will trickle the students to get the outcome as you want it to come out. You get it? Your question will mislead or lead the students. Are you seeing your role now? You're not going to give notes true, but you'll gather them for your own good, and even state those tasks that are going to trickle these students to do the right thing. The moment they do something wrong, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Now, you check, the, 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 it's saying that in small groups, learners explore the school compound. Now, this teacher thought of it that the only way they will appreciate art is by me telling them to move out to the compound and appreciate nature. That is a task set by a teacher. If a teacher is not good enough, he will not think of that. He will just come with his chalk and draw for them a flower. And Look at that flower. Appreciate it. How do you see it? You are teaching about rocks, you are drawing a rock. Can you draw a very good rock? But if you move around and pick or get uh, in an area which has rocks, take them there. Let them observe, let them observe. You can dig your soil profile. You yourself and make your own soil profile. Show them the soil profile. Then after, tell them that I want you to go back home. Get a small dish, make a soil profile. They will make it because they have seen it. I want you to differentiate sedimentary rocks from these rocks. They will do that because they saw them. Or if you don't have that in your environment, go get like, a video with all those. They have them. Show them. Then after, give them like, another task. So the task here is saying that in small groups, learners explore the school compound or neighbor, neighborhood to familiarize with the surroundings to stimulate visual literacy. Remember the objective, I mean the uh, learning outcome was saying, explore the natural environment to arouse artistic instincts. The, the question or the task is leading them to that. Two is to understand the concept of art and design education. So the next task is saying in small groups, learn, learn, learners discuss and evaluate the world around them to gather facts about the relevancy of nature. In other words, we are still about, because art is all about nature. So all those tasks are trying to trigger students by admiring the nature and moving around the natural environment, they are getting the definitions by themselves. They'll know. After that, you ask them what art is, they'll be able to tell you. We go to the next. I want to rush a little bit. Let's rush, let's rush. Very fast. Uh, this is now what I was expect, uh, explaining that the first topic, we call it the topic page. Eh? Or the chap I mean the chapter page. The chapter page in the learner's guide and the teacher's book always has an image which is reflecting what we're teaching about. And it also has um, the learning outcomes. And it also has the key, the key keywords. Keywords are chosen by you. Those words you think that are a student must know in that topic are the keywords. But you are going to see that in these prototypes, people were putting there even words which are not keywords. If you are reading those prototypes, they have words which are not very crucial. We also realized it. 
most especially in ICT. It is words that I don't know what we are on. Eh? There are words which are not key. A key word is that key, I mean, th those words which are used most commonly to bring out a topic. Not so. But here you're going to see that there are many words which are called keywords, yet they are not key keywords. So, but you, in your heads, I want you to know that if you are teaching students, get the keywords that they must know and use them commonly. Let them be common to them. We go to the final, and then we... So this explanation, you can close it. This explanation of the learners, the teachers, I mean the learners book and the syllabus is the same as the learners book, I mean the teacher's guide and the syllabus. And on top of that, it's the same when you have a teacher's guide and the learner's book, uh, when you have a teacher's uh, a learner's book, the only difference between the learner's book and the teacher's guide is that the teacher's guide has guiding notes, but the same questions that are put to the student are there in the student book are there in the teacher's guide. However, in the teacher's guide, the questions which were in the learner's books are answered for you as a teacher. If the question was, what is the meaning of ICT? In the teacher's guide, you also find there the question, what is the meaning of ICT? But also with the answer that ICT refers to this and this and this. We are suggesting, they are talking, the, the learner's book talks to the learner. In fact, it talks, it says that the learner is expected to. The, sometimes the, the learner, a learner, you should, as a learner, you should do this. The learner's book talks to the learner. In fact, as a learner is reading it, He's seeing as if they're talking. May say, hey, does this man know me? They are talking to that. You should do this. You must do this. The learner, that's why the learners are provoked to do what they are. Because the book is talking to them. And the teacher's book is also talking to the teacher. But proposing, is saying that the teacher is expected to do this and this. A teacher should give an exercise at this interval. A teacher should, you get it right. So for you, you are going to use teacher's guides. Not learner's books. But I urge you. To also look through the learner's books such that you appreciate the questions they give them or even you advise change because it's not that as a must those, uh, those questions must remain. You can change the questions by yourself as a teacher provided they remain reflecting the topic. Okay, now the things of the books are closed unless when you have a question there. But let's move to formative I mean, to, to, to preparing a lesson. Uh, uh, Dr. Dean, any question? Or we first into preparing a lesson, then formative assessment, then we come for questions. You write your questions down. I guarantee you we shall answer them. Eh? No. Yeah, they specify the area. You write whatever you think you need to ask. We shall, you go to... to to preparing a lesson. Hmm? I know, first go to preparing. There is that one which says prepare a lesson. Uh -huh, that one. Yeah. Then immediately after opening it, also go and open lesson plan. Hmm. The new curriculum, because there is all done there, but you go to lesson. Uh -huh. Lesson. Open the objective for preparing the lesson. Hmm. I mean, the, 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 the one we started with, the, the, the slide for preparing a lesson. As we are preparing a lesson, all of us are either teachers or teachers in the making. We all know that the number one tool for preparing a lesson, but you have already opened it. Ah. <clears throat> Go to the next slide. And hmm. uh -huh, there. Then now. Okay, we all know as teachers <coughs> that our major tool is none other than there are two, I think, two or three, but now they have increased. There have been a scheme of work and a what? A lesson plan, non so, alongside other teaching material or reading material. 
But now there are going to be four. It's going to be a scheme of work, a lesson plan, teacher's guide, and a learner's book. You must be with those four. It's no longer only a scheme of work and lesson plan. It's a scheme of work, lesson plan, learners, I mean teacher's guide, and learner's book. Because those three communicate for you to be able to prepare a successful lesson. Uh, move down. And a co the caution is here. As we are setting our scheme of work or lesson plan, we make sure we make sure that we do not forget the comp in the new curricula, the word competence, learning outcomes, teacher, stroke, I mean teaching, stroke, learning aids are common. Are we there? In the old curricula, we had uh, objectives, not so. We had content. In the new curriculum, content is no longer there. It's all stipulated in the competence. Because the competency, you have to stipulate what someone is expected to do in that area to be competent. So that is the content. You get what I'm trying to mean? So, though it has to be a little brief, so there is no any room for, comp for content. It's competency that spells out the content that you want. There is no objectives, because I told you objectives are for the teacher. What we need is the learning outcomes. We want to cater for the learner, not the teacher. The teacher is there. He already earned that degree. So all that he's doing is to help the students. That's why we call them learning outcomes. You are developing that scheme and lesson plan for the student, not for you. You are planning for them how they have to learn. You are not planning your own learning. The moment you do objectives, you are planning your own learning. Yet that is not true. For you, you have to have your objectives in the head that I want to make this, sure that these students learn this and this and this and the other. So, um, display for me the, the, the scheme of work. No, don't, 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 just go, okay, just press escape, press escape, press escape, escape button. Press escape button. This far this side, far this side. Uh -huh. Escape, good. Now, go down here and, uh, no, 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 no. On the word documents, click in uh, scheme of work. <coughs> scroll it up. Scroll it up. Now, end there. Uh, uh, reduce it to a hundred, a uh, hundred net because it's too big. I think. Just click in the. No, no, no. You have made it so narrow. Good. So that is a sample scheme of work for a competence-based curriculum. And exactly, but there are things, uh, extend the horizontal scroll bar, extend it this side. Uh -huh, click, uh -huh. click, good. So now that's the sample uh, scheme of work for a competence-based curriculum. It's, it starts like the old, uh, old scheme of work starts. School name, name of the teacher, subject, class, whatever. Now, the major issue is here. Raise it a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit there. Mm -hmm. The first one is similar to the old one. The old one had periods, not so? Uh, let me... Let me pass.
curriculum uh, that is the, 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 the scheme of work and the and the lesson plan and also the old me and him are going to be playing around with the two in the new curriculum period remains also in the old curriculum period was there and also uh, in the that is old Sh uh, go up a little bit <coughs> you remember the old very well continue down Okay, continue down, continue down. Uh, first now go this side, go this side a bit. You remember, uh-huh, week, period, are we there? Even in the new one, those two are maintained. Go to the new back, go back to the new. Week is also, he has blocked it, but week is there. Show them the week. I want them to, to know that week is there. Week, period, even in the new, it's there. Now, the problem starts from, from the third one. For them, they have theme, first leave it there. They have theme, stroke, topic. Remember, we have themes in the, in the syllabus. Do you remember that? So for them, they have theme and topic. Go to the old and show what is there. In the old... There is only topic. Because they do, in the old there was no theme, not so. But the next one, they have, old has content. Add, uh, keep, keep up. In the old one, they have content, not so. Um, but in the new one, go to the new one now. A new one, in the new one, they have um, competency. Now that's where I'm, I'm trying to, to, to explain that, that. Competency, like I told you is what we expect you to display. The abilities, the knowledge, the values you expect you to display. And you can only display them through convincing us. That's why if, instead of putting their content, we left it, you, your content comes under uh, competency. And you don't need to write the competence. You just have to explain us. That a student will give an understanding of the numbers written in other bases. Simply that. Then, when you go to the real work, that's when you're going to. We don't need your content there. Just explain us how that competency is expected of a student. That you expect a student to, to be able to manipulate number bases in this way. This was a mathematics uh, kind of uh, uh, scheme of work. So, competency replaces content the other side. But here, you don't give us your content. You just explain what you expect of a student, a competent student in number bases. You get it? And that is enough. Then the next one is learning outcomes. In the old one, we have objectives. Not so? Show them the old one. In the old ones, we have uh, objectives. Are we there? Just the even interchange. One comes, but the other, but that is the same. Then in the um, old, we have teaching aids and methodology. By the other side, we have... In the other side, we have teaching stroke learning resources. There we have only teaching aids, not so. They were only caring about the teacher. They were forgetting the student. They thought the teacher, I mean, the student is not a, a creator of knowledge, yet it's wrong. A teacher, a student is equally a creator of knowledge. So here I have teaching stroke learning resources because those are the ones that both the teacher and the students are going to use to create knowledge. Then methodology also remains. Reference remains and remark remains. So the only major changes are between themes and topics, competencies, learning outcomes, which are replaced by, which were replaced from the other side. Are we there? The, 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 the topic was not replaced, but they added on themes. The, the content was replaced by content. Uh, the objectives were replaced by learning outcomes. And then the teaching aids we added on teaching and learning objectives, but they are not replaced. The rest are the same. So we expect you to prepare something of that nature and follow it to dot. That is simply the scheme of work. We go to the lesson plan. The lesson plan is already open, even the, in the old curriculum. It's under the lesson plan. Are 
Are we there? So that is the lesson plan, as you remember it. If you remember the, 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 the old one, it was more or less the same. You go to the old one. Just go to the same scheme of work. Down there, there is a, a lesson plan. Down there, just sc scroll down. So you remember the, the old lesson plan was more or less the same. Just the design changed. But they also have... Da, 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 da. What is going to change? Scroll down again. Scroll down. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Okay. What is going to change that? These objectives, the teaching aids are going to... I mean, the teaching aids and... Well, there we have teaching aids and... Uh, teaching and learning aids. And the methodology will remain the same. Go to the, to the new one and show them. Scroll down. And scroll the other side. Mm -mm, the other side. Go up. Just move up. Uh -huh. Now go, come back. No, 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 no. Just come back. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh huh. Are we there? Now, this is where the difference comes in. For them, they have a tabular kind of setting, which shows clearly the theme, because we have it in the syllabus. It has, uh, okay, up to there. Then move up, move down, move down. It has the, I don't know whether people behind are seeing the font. It has the topic, are you seeing? Topic. It has the competence. You just... These things, you don't need to think about them. The topic is already there in the book, not so. You copy and paste. The competence is there. The theme is already there. You copy and paste. The learning outcomes are set for you. Just copy and paste. Uh, the values are there. You no, know, the values, you are the one to determine. You determine and say, according to this topic and the activity that I want to set, which values can, can be achieved among the many? You set the values. Even the skills, it's you to set that with genetic skills. Is, it, is there some collaboration? Is there some cooperation? Is there some critical thinking? Yeah? It's you to think, and you write them that I expect, basing on what I've schemed for these people or what I've planned for these people, there must be some collaboration somewhere. There must be some critical thinking. If they are to get the point the way I want them to get it. So you are the ones to outline them. Basing on what you've given the students to pull out the topic. You get it. Then we go to cross-cutting issues. Those ones, will, again, if according to the topic and the, information, the question, the task you've given, you'll know that these are the cross-cutting issues that I want them to talk about. Maybe it's environmental saving. Eh? Maybe it's human rights care. You get it right, something of that nature. Uh, and uh, the key learning outcomes, we saw them. They were the first ones we talked about. As you give the so-called guiding tasks and the notes you prepared yourself before giving them to, you will know that if they are to research well, these key learning outcomes must come out. By the way, if they research and those key learning outcomes don't come out, you, you will know that there is a problem because you as a teacher, when you research, you knew, like, like it or not, critical thinking must come out. If they are just giving answers, sweeping answers, you ah, just know critical thinking was not there. So you guide them, you say, but what if you thought it in this angle? Say, oh, yeah, it did not take that direction. Yeah, so I know if I take it, I read something about that, let me bring... They, they bring out the answers. And then you get it in the way you want it. Go down again. Um, uh, as you are finishing it, you, you have to tell us the prerequisite knowledge. Because after here, we're going to go to assessment. Assessment. Um, assessment uh, is in three types. There is assessment. We shall reach there. Of, uh, but there is assessment for learning. Then there is assessment as learning, and then there is assessment of learning. So assessment for learning is done in two, uh, in two ways or three. You give it sometimes to know the level at which the prerequisite knowledge students know. You can just come and ask students, who knows anything about ICT? There you, you, you are assessing them for learning so that you know how much they know about ICT before you set a task which is heavy, either heavier or so low for them. You get it right. If you find that majority of them know already much, then you set the task which is above their knowledge or which is hmm, so that you don't take them back. You get it. So these tasks we set them 
we do that kind of assessment to know where to start from, rather than wasting a lot of time where almost all the students know already what a computer is. Hmm? Bring it in another format that. For example, that these computers are said to be input and output devices. But what does input, input, out, output mean? You get what I'm trying to mean. Now, don't ask them what a computer is because they already know. You have assessed, they know. Now, bring some of the terminologies you're using in defining a computer to, to find whether they know exactly what they mean. They know how to define it, but do they know what they mean? Now, start from there. They know the definition, but they don't know the meaning. You think they don't know the meaning because when you ask them what they know about computers, you know no one was going in depth of that so you start from there so that's why we see us we do assessment for learning we also do it sometimes as a student as you give them chance to discuss and present you see that something is lacking so if it's lacking you give them another task then that task is help you to assess to see how much did they learn from the first task i don't know whether you know uh, you, you, we do reduce an example is a redo for our students Students fail tremendously, and you also accept that they have failed. So you give them a redo. In the same field, different questions. Eh? To see whether, after you, because when they fail, you go through. Some, they tell you, you people, how could you really fail? Yeah, you take them through. Then after you give them a redo. You hide it. You can't even just change the, the wordings. But you're asking the same thing. And you see whether they understood. Now, when you're contented that, now, even when I've, just, when I've twisted, students were able to understand what I meant. So it means they understood something. You leave that topic and go to the next topic. Because they are, you have achieved. You have achieved. So exactly, that's why I'm saying our assessment for learning is done to know the level of knowledge the students have about the topic, but sometimes to see whether after giving them a test and they have failed, now they have learned something. Or even if they have not failed it, you may teach a topic and it had many areas to, 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 to handle. Then after you say, let me give them another test to see whether they understood it from up to down. And then that will, will help. Uh, learning material, you mentioned the materials you have, like it, it was in the other side, and then the references, you give them there. So the only difference between the old and the new is that we add in the prerequisite knowledge, and we add in the learning material was there, not so. That is the only difference, apart from the key learning outcomes, apart from the core values, apart from, because those ones were not anywhere yeah, in the old curriculum. They are new. That's why I started by taking us through the syllabus. Learn those key learning outcomes, generic skills, because they, they need them. And uh, by the way, it's not us in Uganda. I've told you these syllabi are in all other countries, apart from Burundi, Sudan, and Congo. But all other East African countries, Cambridge, all schools that are using Cambridge uh, syllab and curricula. Exactly this is what they do. So it's not new. Core values, each country has its core values at once. People who are studying Cambridge, they have their core values, they are different. Even if you are in Uganda and you are using core values of Cambridge, they are asking things of that country. You will wonder. Can you protect your citizens like this as if you are from America or whatever? You get it. Eh? But for them, they are preparing you for that kind of work. So also, as we are preparing a Ugandan student. Um, that said and done, I want us to go to formative assessment. You write your questions. You have a, a, a burning one. Okay. Scroll up. You want to see something. First scroll up. You want to see the lesson presented? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The lesson presentation is the same with the other. First end there. This is called the lesson presentation. I think we all know the lesson presentation. It has remained the same with the other. The only difference is that it reduces on the columns. It doesn't have content, like we eliminated it from the, uh, the, the scheme of work. Okay? So it, what, what it has on it has phases one, two, like we, step one, two. Eh? After the step, we go to teacher activity. Here, the teacher is speaking to the learner. The teacher will do this and uh, the other. The learner is expected to respond maybe to the roll call. After that, the teacher introduces the term ICT and other terminologies. The, uh, no, 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 no. The teacher gives guiding questions that help learners to define ICT. The learner defines ICT. The teacher's role is to give guiding I don't expect the teacher to find a teacher's activity saying the teacher 
into, uh, explains what ICT is not. The teacher gives guiding tasks to learners to be able to explain the terminology ICT. Here, the learners use the task, uh, do the tasks and they explain the terminology ICT. You get it? Uh, the teacher gives guiding tasks to the learners to identify different ICT items in the school. The learners identify the different ICTs in the school. You get it right. So purely it's showing that the teacher's role is a guiding role. The learner's role is to do. That's why I told you that this curriculum is all about doing, not knowing. You have to know and go ahead of knowing and do. So we are not criticizing knowing. We are saying knowing is good, but it's not ena enough. You need to know and do. Good. So you can scroll again and finish. Scroll again. Down, down, down. No, 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 down, down, down. So, scroll this side. Then there is a set of evaluation remained. Scroll down, scroll down. Scroll this side. Teachers assessment, uh, self assessment, you assess how you have guided the lesson. You are not assessing how you've taught, but how you've guided the lesson. And in this guidance, you have to be evidence-based. The lesson was successful because mm -hmm. learners were able to tour around the school and identify the different ICTs. They were also able to do research, individual research or group research, and they were able to present in class the different, term, I mean, the terminologies of ICT. Are we there? So you, you have to have evidence of the happening. Don't just say, the lesson was successful, period. Those days we used to do that. <laughs> the lesson was successful, and you go. And it's enough. But no, nowadays it's not, mm, it's not uh, enough. So that is it, I think, about... Uh, let, uh, okay, you start and then he comes. What about the lesson plan? I really want you to talk about these things. The lesson, as our teacher told us, mm. our lecturers, the lesson has steps. Mm. Step one is introduction, mm. lesson documents. Mm. Mm. I really want you to uh, take us through that slowly mm. to that how can a teacher do this lesson, mm. how does he do uh, the lesson, and how does he evaluate? Okay. So, first of all, let me hope you have appreciated the same. Okay. First of all, let me hope you have appreciated that it's similar. To the old one. The only difference is that there is no content. Where there was step, there is phase. You get it right? Like phase one for roll call. It remains that the teacher does the roll That one that is done by the teacher, not so. You do the roll call and then the introduction, which would be the introduction. The teacher sets guiding questions to introduce the terminology ICT. You get it right? Then the learners activity. No, you are, you are in the wrong forum. You go to, to lesson plan. Lesson plan. I want us to talk about it when they are. No, it's down. Hey, you you cancel them off. Uh, go to lesson plan. Go to lesson plan. Mm -hmm. Lesson plan. Lesson plan. Yeah, that one. Because that's what he wants. Scroll down. You can reduce on the on the whatever to a hundred percent. Okay, even if it's ninety, but a hundred would be better. But it's okay. Scroll down. Scroll. So that one we are clear. We said you get them from the book, apart from the general sk uh, genetic skills, core values. Those ones you 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 use your common sense as you are getting that. Ah, this one is around here. Scroll down. That one, no one should guide you. It's you to think and say, ah, I think this one falls under here. So now here, 
this is the it has three columns as you see them only the phase is the step in the former in the in the former you get it phase one is step one then here when you come teachers activity i've told you the the first one is always salutations or and roll call non so that one is done by you you salute your students and you do the roll call that the teacher salutes the students or greets the students and then does the roll call that is yours then when you come to introduction for example um, uh, the, the, for example, the teacher introduces uh, the lesson. Where I want to say the, the teacher introduces the lesson by giving guiding, uh, maybe comments and questions. Because it's not criminal in the introduction for you to start by not defining, but by giving them challenging issues. For example, I'm on ICT. Uh, we want to talk about ICT. Okay, let me talk about migrations in history. We've come for migration. Remember, this is a competence-based curriculum whereby it's the learner to take the lead. Not so. However, you are not, according to your assessment you did, the assessment for learning, you saw that students were not leading. You just asked them what is migration and they didn't know anything about migration. So when you come here, it's allowed to say the teacher introduces migration by giving maybe uh, trickling hints or hints to the to the to the to, to, to the terminology called migration, and you can give the examples because here you're allowed to write. For example, you can say the teacher asks asks students how many of them have ever shifted from one house to another because you are not one thing you are not supposed to do. That one is illegal. Let me declare it. You are not supposed to define for them. But you can trickle them or give them hints. Hinting is okay. How many of you have ever moved from one house to another? You are hinting. Because that is migration. You get it. How many of you have ever moved from one house to another? Or how many of you have ever moved from one village to another? Or from one school to another? You get it, right? Hey, me. What happened? What caused it? This and this. Uh, what, what happened? Uh, no. Now you are moving from one house or from one village to another. Mm -hmm. What do you do? We carried our mattresses, our goats, our... Oh, good. You get what I'm trying to mean. And then... You are bring, but you are not defining for them the word migration. You are avoiding it. You are giving them guiding scenarios, guiding situations. Gui you get it right. Oh, questions which trickle them. And after them giving them, uh, telling you that, you say, them, now, what you've been talking about is more or less the same, if not exactly what migration means. Now, class, from all our deliberations, who can define for us the term migration? Now, how do you write it there? You can just say that uh, the teacher introduces the topic migration by giving guiding hints or give, giving hints and guiding questions to the learners to define the term migration. E.g., the teacher asks them who has ever shifted from one house to another. You leave it there. Then the guiding questions are there. For example, you can say, after those guiding down, you say, what is Migration. You get what I'm trying to mean? I've given them hints, for example, who has ever migrated from one house to another or one village to another. Then after you ask the question, what is migration? For you know that you may even have put there many scenarios. Shifting from one house to another, shifting from one village to another. You get what I'm trying to mean? But you're not giving them the definition. Then after, down you ask them a question, what is migration? Learner's activity. The learners respond to the question by giving uh, or by, by answering what migration is. You get it? You've helped them, but you've not defined for them. You've helped them to sh show them the way, but you've not defined, them, defined for them the answer. And by the way, that's why for us we suffered. Who studied under that way, they could just define for you anything. And in, in competence-based, almost each answer is right. I know there are wrong answers, but it's incumbent of you, the teacher, to correct them that, okay, what about Joseph if you said it in the other way? If you borrow the leaf from what Jonathan said earlier, you get it. In that way, he's getting on road. I'm not saying yours is wrong, but it would sound better if you eliminate this word. The student is being helped to learn his mistakes politely and we'll come back to the road. 
that you're not defining for them because what we hate is imposing our thoughts on them. But we want, again, even in the amid is that, we don't want, again, them to lose track. Are you seeing how you have to balance the equation as a teacher? But you can. So uh, have, I, have I answered it? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. 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 You, uh, the, you harmonize whatever they are talking about on your chalkboard or whiteboard by summarizing what they are. They are, whatever they are writing, you summarize it very well. And, and then, for them, they make their notes from, from what you've summarized, what we call harmony. You're harmonizing. They will base on that and come and either copy notes from, from the teachers. You give them notes from the teachers. But you give them, you refer them. And I want you to go on page this and this and this. Or you photocopy page this and this, or you go to a textbook, this and this, and use these in reference to the points that we've talked about here. Go and formulate these points. You don't give them notes. You guide them to make those notes. For you, your harmony, as they're giving points, you outline them, you outline them, you outline them, then you send them to the pages where you want them to to write the notes. Mm. 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 Exactly. Mm. 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 Remember, in groups, they are giving you their contribution. Not so. Now, on top of their contribution, if it was wrong, you guided them and they made it right. Because whenever you guide them, you have to make sure that they go and rewrite and bring you the agreed position. You get it right. So on addition to that, they go and add on information from here. You get what I'm trying to mean? You don't rubbish. First of all, what you have to first take in their contribution. If it's wrong, agree in class together with their fellow students, correct them and tell them to go and rewrite according to what you have agreed. They bring it back, they can even read it in class, and they say, ah, I think that was our position. Not so. Students, very good. Students. So on addition to that, I want you to go on page and this and this and this and add on these couple of notes. They will help you to guide you better. We'll leave it at that. Okay. Mm. A, a supplement. A teacher is supplementing something. Mm. Mm. may have prior knowledge to uh, what, what is going to be, or what has been given to them. And there are times when they don't have prior knowledge. So when they don't have prior knowledge, uh, we believe that there is some precepts that we are given to them by the teacher to, to make research, possibly from the possible sources. So once they bring the presentation, now the teacher guides looks into uh, what they have brought and then he continues to guide them. Now, uh, there are times when they have prior knowledge, so the teacher tasks them to present and in the presentation the teacher can see, can model, can make more supplements and with that uh, other skills like critical thinking, uh, were stipulated. Then I give an example. For instance, in mathematics, which is my area, there are topics where students have prior knowledge, and some challenging topics like quadratics. Uh, like in physics, we have even Archimedes principle, coordinate geometry. These are topics you believe that they have interfaced with in senior one. Now, when it comes to senior two, you require them. To or you expect them to have prior knowledge. 
So uh, you make them present what they, are, they already know. So from what they know, the teacher now makes a supplement and makes more guides as well. Uh, even makes more applications like Archimedes law in physics. Teacher makes more other kind of simulations, applications, the physical world, but first testing what they know. Thank you very much. Huh? I appreciate I think it has come out clearly well. Yeah, so it's not criminal. Their presentations are not rubbish or their contribution. You add on. Do you get it? You add on. So you are guiding them well as we go to the next, to the formative assessment and then. So, I'm going to say, uh, I think I have a case of, uh, I'm imagining that I go to school mm -hmm. where this student can afford to buy that book for the student's name. Mm -hmm. uh, is the student allowed not to take any other notes at all or the only that book because it has everything? Not at all. By the way, this book doesn't have everything. This book gives you the basic information you need. That's why we say, alongside the teacher's book, we need what we call non-textbook, okay, non-teacher's guide and non-learner's guide material. So the, the textbooks they were using are still as very crucial. Because these books, if you check them, they are shallow. I don't know whether I've checked them. They are shallow. But what we, what, what, what we want to avoid is uh, poisoning students with only our own thoughts. So these books have a brief information just to open their brains and then lead them write their minds according to what they want or what they have revised or researched in other books. You get it right. Because like uh, uh, the teacher has told you that in mathematics they may be having like three formulas of solving one thing, one number. You cannot, this book may be having only one. You will not refuse a student who brings another formula provided it's applicable and it's right standard. You get what I'm trying to do. So, this is the basic, the beginning. You can get more information from anywhere. Because when you tell, tell them to research, they don't research in learner's book only. They go everywhere. That's why I'm saying that it's not illegal at all. This is just the, the guiding book, but you can read other books. Like if you're Christians, reading the Bible does not stop you from reading other books which have Christian faith and you get what I'm going to mean. You are allowed and you enrich your faith and things. So it is with this. So any other question about that? Or we go to assessment? Because in this assessment that I'm tackling is the last major session whereby we have to practice something. And I think. You talked about the groups. Mm. You are saying that uh, they teach in groups. And at the same time, mm. they have these contributions raised. Mm. Are they attracting a mark from that? The, the, from the from the from the, the group discussion. Yes, now uh, let me make it clear. In the book we have two types of activities. We have uh, the continuous activities, which we call the formative, you know, formative and summative yeah. assessment. So these continuous activities are informal formative assessment. Eh? The, the, the daily work you would give the students and mark their books and even give them mark and even record it but you may not use it to to add to the final mark you you you, you evaluate it very well you even give them feedback that you scored this out of this but you may not need use it this one for for the, the topic i mean for the yeah within the topics as you give a topic and yeah but there is one we call because those are just called continuous activities mm -hmm. but there's what we call activity of integration that is the last activity you give because these activities come from the objectives each objective will have we each objective i mean learning outcome will come will have an activity as a must because each objective is heavy to attract an activity however those few activities you may not need them to 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 to, to be used uh, to be used uh, to be used uh, on the final grade that UNEB needs because UNEB needs a final grade which is going to add up to 20%. So that one only comes from the active talk of integration. So these common, common tasks that you give them, 
are to help them know their level of knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes. You can even have a full file for them, but you're not going to use them on the final mark. So, you are right. We grade them, but we don't use them. What we use is only one, the activity of integration. That activity of integration, you hear, it's integrating all the other activities together. Hmm? It, it, it looks at the whole competence as a whole. For example, the number one competence I talked about here in ICT was, uh, let me use ICT because it's the one that I'm very conversant with. And the first competence was, the learner, the learner appreciates the importance of the physical uh, devices of a computer, of a computer system, and uses them in everyday life. So, when I'm making an activity of integration, that task or that scenario, you know, in fact, the scenario that I'm creating, because whenever we are creating a, a question, which we call a scenario, it should be solving a societal problem or societal challenge. But it should encompass all the, the, comp the full competence. Because I told you that learning outcomes summarize the full competence. Meaning that you should make sure that each learning outcome is touched in your final question. So the final question should have all this. Can I give you an example of this? It should have all this. Uh, because the question that I should ask should make sure that it should encompass, um, for example, uh, let me formulate a question that is going to make sure that a student will be forced to define ICT, should be forced uh, to give the benefits of ICT, and should be forced to talk about the safety precaution. Mm -hmm. Let me give a scenario. The scenario may not reflect them. In, in fact, it cannot reflect all that. But the tasks are the ones to reflect that. You have been elected the new prefect of uh, Chigari Secondary School and the ICT. Or you, are the, you have been elected the new ICT prefect of Chigari Secondary School. Among the two tasks are to see that the lab is always clean, locked in time, computers are well covered, and uh, to report any kind of misconduct in lab to the authorities. As a prefect, one of the students reports to you that a mouse has been broken. Mm -hmm. Task A now, if you end there, task A. For example, you've ended there. I I'm trying to why not define before this student already? No. Because I've mentioned the computers and everything. I've mentioned in them. Are you here the tasks? Number one. Task number one. Define the term ICT. <laughs> number two. Basing on the question above, would you identify the possible ICT that are available in Chigali Secondary School Lab? I expect him to go ahead and mention because in the question I've talked about them. He must be able to be knowing that those are the ICTs. The student may think because uh, in my question, as I was stating, I wrote computers. But in the computer lab, there, there is a music system. There is a uh, so I can ask that as a student of ICT, mention the possible ICTs that are in Chigali. Those possible, you can go ahead with it beyond what you think. What, you know, what is in Chigari and give me then beyond what you know, is in there. Because Chigari may not be having a music system, but as a master compiler must be having a music system. Because if you are projecting both things, it must be having a camcorder or a camera, one of the two. It has, so a student will go ahead to me that a computer must be having a camera to help get this idea. It may be having even a CCTV camera. For this, you get what I'm going to mean. So a, a third question may be, how is best can we protect these ICTs from getting any damage? Are we there? So the student will be able to explain to you how best they can protect those ICTs. So what am I trying to, I'm answering your question that 
The activities that you give, those are formative kind of activities. They are direct. What is, uh, for example, if, if you have been studying about the first objective, defining the term ICT, the first activity will be, in your groups, defining the term ICT, that is very direct. You get it? But the, the, the activity of integration, from, one, from that scenario that I've built, I just tell you define the term ICT. I've not, I've not done anything to start defining. From the previous knowledge you've had from the small objectives that you handle. So, in other words, the activity of integration is trying to check whether the student understood all the other objectives as you came passing through them. And in, in this competence-based curricula, we are not making a student a slave that, hey, you are copying for the... Our issue is not hinting for the student. By the way, we even allow to give support material. We want you to, 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 to put a student in a position to, to know and you blame him that you've only refused to know because you don't want to know. But we defined, we gave you hints on what a computer is. We gave you hints on how many, on, on, on different ICT materials that are in the lab. How then could you fail to define them in the active of integration? So when we are in the learning objective, I mean outcomes, we let them get used to those things normally. You can even start show them. You can help them even learn them and speak them out. Now, the active of integration, that is where they are doing a test. It's like a test. You time it, 40 minutes or one hour. No books, no anything, no anything. But in the activities, you leave them consult any books they want. We want them to learn. Then later, finally, we see whether they learned. If there were four objectives, we ask them in one snap. But early alone, we left you to consult, to do revision, to do what, to, to under, we are giving you a chance to learn and master. In the activity of integration, that's now where you're repenting your sins. If you are just playing around, we shall get you. So that's why in this competence-based uh, uh, learning, we are not making learning a punishment. We want the student even to know. You can even copy, it's okay. However, activity of integration, no copy. In these activities, small activities, copy, do anything. But we tell you that if you are copying and you're not learning, there is an activity of integration. That one who keeps them awake. And they will do finally as I go to assessment. I have a question related to that. Mm. When I read my, uh, my book here, which is Sacrifice, mm. I see that uh, at every chapter there mm. is an activity of integration. Mm. Am, I, am I right to say that? An attitude of integration is what is, is what given to the children and the church. Exactly. And it's called a summative kind of an it's like their exam. Students don't do exams. The activity of integration is an exam. Each topic has an exam. Each topic has an exam. That is the activity. The activity of integration is their exam. Yeah. And it's kept in the form that I'm going to show you there. It's form kept in form of competencies. The scores in competence. I'm going to show you how to score them and how we do them. But every activity of integration is the exam. They don't do exams. They, that is like their exam. So these bu, bu, bu continuous activities are their tests. Is, yeah. it, uh, is it then allowed mm. to, to choose school students mm. that are not in the activity of integration? If you choose three mm -hmm. activities plus the activity of integration and you're making an average of four, no, you can only choose, you can only use your, those small activities for your own assessment, you as you, in the school. But the activity of integration stands alone because it's a ministry requirement. That one is kept for ministry. So these small activities of yours, you can use them on your own. But again, we also discourage you. We also want you to use the activity of integration to report to the parents and the student that after we gave you a chance to to research and make all the necessary research in those small activities. We found out that you've not mastered the concepts in the activity of integration, so please go back and read more. Then we give you another activity of integration, and you prove to us that you've gotten the concept. So the activity of integration checks to see whether, yes, in these small activities we are giving you, and they're giving you liberty to research, do what? Where are you getting the concepts? Where are you getting the values? Where are you getting the knowledge? Where are you getting the skills? That's why you give the activity of integration. You don't open any book, you now tell us how we mastered 
the things. If it's a skill, if you are going to do a pulley, show it to us and tell us how it revolves. Mm -hmm. Without now guidance. You were guided earlier in the activities. Even the teacher can come and help you. No, no, no. Here you do it at this degree. Uh, mathematics can even, the teacher go and even solve for you. And I know you don't solve it like this. If you do it like this, they help you. But now, active of integration, you carry your cross. And tell us that, okay, when I was helped by my friends in the groups, when I was helped by the teacher, when I consult the books, this is the knowledge I got. This is the skill I got. This is the value I have. This is the attitude. And you now demonstrate it. Now, Unless there is an, another question, I want to go to. Yeah. 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 I really want you to um, elaborate mm. more about uh, assessment for learning, mm. assessment for learning, mm. and assessment for learning. Okay. When, when, uh, when is the teacher supposed to assess for learning, for learning, and for learning? Okay, put for me. Project it. Very fast, I'm going to, because I want to go to the time is not my best ally, I'm saying it here. Yet you have a, I need an, an hour with you practically doing an activity of integration. Uh, those are the ones that we are talking about. Uh, assessment for learning, assessment as learning, and assessment of learning. Yes, now, scroll to assessment for, 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 for learning, and I read it out for them. Ah, no, no, you've gone, go back. There. Uh, no, 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 no. Continue, 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 continue. That is okay. Continue. Uh huh. Go back. Now, this is assessment for learning. And we are saying this is an approach to teaching and learning that creates feedback which is then used to improve students' performance. In other words, assessment for learning involves a continuous way of checking and balancing in the teaching and uh, the learning process. So this is what I want to, in summary. Assessment for learning is done for like two to three things. Number one, to check the level at which you fall the students in that particular topic. Are you getting what I'm trying to mean? When I come and I've come to teach about, for example, migration. Who knows anything about migration? I want to first know, do you know? If you know, then it will be better for me to start from there, I mean, not to, to waste a lot of time on what you already know. I, I do know what you know and help you to learn what you, you don't. That is assessment of learning. It helps you to know the level at which they are so that you can start there, from there to continue. And again, the more you, you give those continuous tests, those, uh, that is assessment for learning, those continuous tests are both assessment for learning and or as learning. Hmm? Uh, the more you continuously give those continuous tests, you come to realize that maybe when I was giving them the tasks, the tasks were not clear to them. Because according to what they are answering here, it shows that they didn't understand very well. Yet, when I gave them the other task for objective two, they understood it very well. Meaning that my first question was not clear. You get it? I get what I'm trying to mean. So, those continuous assessments are to check both the student's level of knowledge of learning at each and every time. I've told what migration is. Have they learned? I give them a small task. I've told the effects of migration. Have they learned? I give them a task. If I see they are hmm, not coming out very well, I go back and say, no. Listen, when I gave you a task about this and ask you this question, this is what you answered. But according to what we discussed, we say effects of migrations were this and this and there. Meaning that you get rid of you go back. And is there anyone who has a better or another version of eh? They also give their views. Then you say, tomorrow we are coming to have a small test about effects of migration. That is still assessment for learning. You are assessing to see their level of achievement at each and every step. At each and every step. Till when you come to assessment of. Assessment of is the last one. But before that, there is what we call assessment as learning. Assessment as learning is more or less assessment for learning. But assessment as learning, those are the individual tests you either give to students or you leave the students to do them themselves. For example, I've seen that Patrick is weak at effects of migration. But most of them have passed. Not so. I'll come and ask a question for Patrick as Patrick alone. I say, Patrick, 
go and do that question and answer it for me and bring it back. Why? Because I realize you, you yourself, you are the only one having the problem. So those individual tests or the individual efforts that you give to students are assessment as learning. You assess them as you continue learning with the respect for them, you help them. Sorry by story. They are for individuals in most cases. Or a small group which has lagged behind. Or which needed more help somewhere. Some. So assessment as learning and for learning are more or less the same. Their work is to, to, to follow students' improvement. Where are they? Where are they reached? Eh? You are all aiming at that. Now assessment of learning is the is the one which is trying to show you that okay, you've told us. We have been doing these tests and we have seen you have been good. You have been trying to perform better. Now, can you defend your marks in the other, here, in the activity of integration? Now, assessment of learning is to test whether learning has taken place, simply. It's to test whether learning has taken place. We, the topic was all about migration. Can you, in one city, explain explain can you I was uh, sorry, we, we had something we are trying to solve with doctor. So I was trying to say uh, that uh, assessment of learning is trying to assess whether learning has taken place. The level of full achievement of a competency. At what level have you achieved the full competency? Because the other time assessment as learning and for learning was assessing the level of achievement of objective, I mean of outcomes. You get it right. The first outcome, second outcome, but not a full competence as a whole. But now activity of integration is assessing to see that if a student is faced with a full task, can he break it in the mid slowly, slowly, slowly and finish it by himself? That is what he assesses. The moment he can do that, then learning has taken place. Are we there? Good. So we, we leave that, we leave that and go to the slide which has uh, activity of integration. So this, uh, this slide where we are going is where our activity is going to come from, from. I want you to be very attentive because you are going to formulate activities. You have books. You are in position also to, 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 to copy from there, but I will note that you've copied from the book. I want you to formulate your own as in a group, you formulate your own activity of integration basing on that that you're going to see in the books and what we are going to talk about here. Look for activity of integration. Yeah, that one. Combine that one. Number one task. When we are making an activity of integration, there are rules that we have to follow. Number one, we have to make a scenario or a, pro a, a societal challenge. An activity of integration comes from a certain scenario you ever thought of or you have ever experienced or a societal challenge that a country is facing. For example, you are facing kind of a, is it a price rise or eh? something of that? I don't want to call it inflation. Economists know it better. But there is that problem whereby soap is at 7,000, 8,000. Eh? Fuel is at up there. So if you find such a, a, a challenging situation, you can use it to come up with a very good activity of integration in mathematics, in, a, in, in a economics, in entrepreneurship. Even me of ICT, I can use it. Because the computers you used to buy at uh, 1.5, I guarantee you now buying an i3. You'll buy it at yeah, something like uh, 2 million, 3 million. 
Yeah, because of this raise. Eh? So even us, it has affected us. So you, you make a scenario. Why we want an artificial, inter an artificial interpretation is to make a scenario that will open the eyes of the student that, hey, I can also be of help to solve a problem in a society. So when you're making a, an act of integration, it should be based on a societal challenge, number one. It should be made, it should come from things that are within the society. You get it? That's why we tell you that the activities which are in the book, you can ignore them and make a good activity which your students can understand. Yeah? I told you you are from Kabore Maido, you are from Kaboyo. Your challenges are very different from those of Kampala. So why should you follow this activity of integration here? But what you do, make an activity of integration that can address the challenges in your area, but still within the competence we there. When we nullify an activity of integration, we nullify an activity of integration, if the scenario is not, re if the questions you said, the tasks are not related to the, to the scenario, are you there? For example, uh, let me give an example. You are a student of ICT and you have a debate with a school in uh, South Africa. As a student of, uh, no, let me repeat it out loud. Your school has been invited to join a debate which is hosted in South Africa in a school maybe called Cape Town School. Your head teacher is not so much ICT literate. He asks you as a student of ICT in the absence of your teacher for computer to guide them on how best they can connect to that debate in South Africa. Now, when it comes, that is a very good scenario. Now, when it comes to the task, I'm expected to ask tasks like this. Explain the different tools that you may need to make sure that the students in your school join the debate in the South African Cape School. Give those tools that you will use. B, um, write a requisition costing each and every tool that you've mentioned above and direct the teacher and give, re, uh, and give the uses of each and every tool. You get it? Write a letter costing each tool, but giving the function of it. If you have said a microphone, tell the teacher, a microphone. A microphone is used for this and the other. If you say the computer, a computer will help us to connect to the whatever. If you say the a camera, a camera will help us. No. In the first task, I was trying to see whether a student will know which tools are necessary to connect online. But in the second question, I'm trying to ask to see whether a student will be able to know the users of each and every tool. In the last question, for example, I can say that, inform the head teacher of how best they can keep those items safe until the next debate may be in another school in South Africa or any other country. You get it? So in that way, I'm also catering for the safety precautions, so I have made sure that I've catered for everything as the competence was asking for. And I'm not still meandering away from the task because it's all still on the same scenario. Because remember, the scenario should not separate from the questions. But imagine I had made this. After making that whole scenario of a, a debate in South Africa, and I come on task and say, task number one, what is a computer? I'm totally off now. You get it right. Number two, oh, what do you mean by connecting on internet? I'm off. Those questions may be relevant, but they are not accurate, depending on the scenario you set. We know that you, you want the students to define the ICT true, but if you want them to define, let them define it through your, 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 your scenario. You get what I'm trying to mean? So the scenario should connect to the question, or the questions should be related to the scenario. They should not separate each other. Some people use scenarios and even societal problems are scenarios because even if it was a problem, you formulate it to become a scenario. Why do you want scenario questions? They give the student a chance to think. They are not as direct as what. Even when after you ask questions like what is it, but it's related to the 
So the student will answer while solving a problem, will not just answer anyhow. I don't know that you are getting the reason to why we, we give scenarios. For a student to answer while solving a problem, because there is a difference between identify any four ICT items you know. I mean, I will identify them, you get it right. But they, it's not so much helping like when I say, identify the ICT items that can help us connect to a school in South Africa. Then you are solving a problem, so a student, even when a student goes out, he will not just scram that there is a microphone. There is, you know, a microphone can help us talk to a person who is far. A modem will help us to connect to the internet. Not just saying, any ICT items you know, a modem, a microphone, a modem, and leave it here. Now, if someone says, man, nah, get, we have a meeting with the people, with the sponsors abroad, can you help us? You started ICT by saying, <laughs> you don't know because you just know the items by name. But you don't know their use. But because the scenario was there, you, you can remember that, ah, yeah, I remember when they told us about the debate, we used them, used it there. You, you, you used, as we are studying, you used to answer questions while solving problems, which are in the society. Because this society is full of, there are no problems, there are challenges. I don't know whether you're getting why we use those scenarios. We want to groom a student who can solve a problem, not a student who grams. That's what we say, that this culture is all about doing, not knowing. So, in addition to knowing, do. Yes, you know the items, but what do they do? In a tough situation, where people want to communicate to abroad, how will those items help them even explain that? Are we there? So those two things are different. The old curriculum is different from the new curriculum. You can scroll down there, see? Now, you can read it like that. Uh, you can push it. Yeah. Um, now, let's go back again. So, this is what we are saying. I keep talking about I'm going to leave all this slide with doctor, and they're already on his laptop. So, but what I'm trying to mean is that the last and the summative activity of evaluation that the learner understands uh, that they, uh, to evaluate the learner's understanding, that is the ability to solve contextualized problems through integration of knowledge, skills, behavior, and behavior of the chapter. So, what am I trying to mean? That as a student is explaining how to solve a problem, you know that he's also improving on English. Do you know that he's also improving on mathematics? We shall need only one model. Why? Because this room is small. But if we had like a big three rooms, it means that one model may not help. The frequency, the proximity will be, no, now it's bringing in mathematics. We need like seven of them, and we need two switches. Because a switch of seven ports, that is now a student who is understanding. He knows that even a switch of seven ports will not help a computer lab, which has ten computers. Because Seven ports will only connect six. Because there is another wire which is going to cut through. You get it right. So a student will, by mistake, learn. You will learn by mistake. <laughs> by force, but by mistake. Eh? Because as he's trying to, to, to learn, but to explain in learning. The only way he can learn is by explaining that. But he doesn't know that he's learning. Why, do, why are you saying that we need a, a better switch? That, so because the computers are many, and if this switch, we see it has only six ports there, he's learning that. A, spot, I mean, a switch which has only six ports cannot help in a computer lab of 20 computers. That one for you, that you say, oh, now he's learning. he's learning. So that is how better this curriculum is. And uh, here it's clear that uh, activity of integration combines terms uh, combined in a term, stroke year, will contribute to 20%. That's not what I want. I want us to go down to show you that when you are making, when you are making these uh, activities of uh, integration, I want us to, to, to also to think about this. Is it providing some skills in it? The scenario can remain plain, but the questions now we are going to ask, Will they pull out some skills in a student? The question in B, okay, if A does not pull out the skills, it's pulling out the knowledge, will B, make sure that at least B pulls out the skills. Hmm? 
if A was all about defining an eh, make sure that the question B goes to, to provoke the student to implement. Now, like the question there, I would have asked to make the student implement because there was no skill there. I would have asked that. As after recommending and everything, the headmaster has requested you to connect them to the debate. Now that calls for skills and attitude. You have to be with the two. If you don't have attitude of loving ICT, they can give them to you and you shiver. Have you ever seen the one you give? And you may not even connect the single, you may think a, a kid takes alcohol, but doesn't take the attitude and the fear. Until when you come there and you say, no, these are machines which cannot think like you think, set all. Now, like you see, my brother here, he's set up. Very confident. He's doing the things right now. You get it? He has attained the skill fully. So that is what we are talking about. You, you learn and become better and better. And by the way, even if you're an expert and you have a master's in ICT, there are things you may not be knowing and your student knows. Comes the but that, if you do it like this, I want you to see. A mathematician, you can tell me. There are students who have formulas that you didn't even think that they would work well. But after you say, ah, I think it can work. Mm -hmm. So that is the chance, giving them a chance to explore and then they discuss something. So, and, and by the way, when you're teaching, there is what we, talk, we call DIA. I don't know if some of you have ever heard of DIA. When the students are given a chance to do those activities, they are dia How? They are discovering. After discovering and exploring, they explain. After explaining, they analyze their own explanations. Yeah. As the students are presenting, they are also analyzing. Oh, but I think, according to so and so's presentation, I think, ah, I think I went as Some groups are even saying, Saka, you allow us to present next time. We, are, uh, we have acknowledged that I think we are off track. You tell them it's okay. If you have also realized it, it's okay. Go and organize yourself. So you give them a chance for us to discover and explore. Hmm? Tell them, go and research. Based on this, I they go there. Yeah. Given a chance to discover. Then after that, they are given a chance to explain what they have discovered. After that, they are given a chance to analyze their own discovery. Hey, okay, we have explained this and discovered that. Then you give them a chance to about no, according to your friends, peer evaluation, they have said you've done nothing. And I'm adding on something that if improve here and here and here, good. So they are given a chance to go back and analyze their own discovery. Then finally they come back and apply. So that is dear. Discovery, explanation, analysis, and then application. Somewhere. Uh, it's somewhere. And then application. Yes, uh, thank you so much. You are teaching us about assessment. Mm. I've not yet. Um, yeah, okay, it's kind of, but I've been on activity of integration first. Yes, uh, exactly. Mm. In my class of uh, evaluation, mm. assessment and evaluation, mm. uh, my lecturer told me, mm. when you say to the paper, it has to be bad and very well mm. In other words, she should uh, cover the levels of knowledge mm. and submit it in the new section. This, uh, I want you to, uh, to, 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 to tell us, tell me, how does this particular interpretation get up with the levels of knowledge? Mm -hmm. I think you know those levels of knowledge, mm -hmm. including uh, what do you call it? Understanding, Understanding, creating, those who are then applying analysis. How but does this question of interpretation, mm -hmm. interpretation get up with all those levels of knowledge? When I want to imagine that learners, learners uh, have to be get up with all the levels of knowledge. But I think according to my explanation, in fact it caters for them beyond enough. Because I've told you, the learners are given a chance to discover. Mm -hmm. When you discover, you are you are you are interacting with the environment of knowledge. You get it right. Interacting with the knowledge is not true that you'll understand. But as you interact and explore, you can get a chance to understand. If you understand, you are able to explain if you, are, uh, no, if, if, if you, are, if you uh, interact, you are able to understand and even uh, analyze. You get it, right? When you analyze very well, mm, you, you go into the level of now critically thinking that, okay, I think uh, if I present it in this way, it's better than this. Why? Because of, you get what I'm trying to do. 
in that way, you are trying to bring in all the levels of those taxonomy. You get what I'm saying? Up to creation of new knowledge, because that's the climax in the new model, in the new finally. Creation of knowledge. The moment a student is able to hear others present and say, ah, ah I think, sir, I went wrong here. Or they come up and say, sir, but what if I bring it in this version? Just know that they are discovered, they are explored, they are critically analyzed, they have uh, applied, and now they are at the level of creating their new. You get it? So it caters for it very well. That's why I told you that if you see that competency that we set in this syllabus, it's broken into different areas and abilities. There is knowledge, understanding, values, attitude, and skills. All those are catering, purely catering for the Bruins taxonomy. So, yes. uh, for instance, your question is very good, but it depends on the way you set your own question. In order to uh, get in touch with the police that someone or to realize the competence that one wants, it depends on the way even if you value the terminology of safety. I'll give an example. What is Bruins that levels of Bruins that someone? Like understanding analyzing, synthesizing. Then the question is you said. Suppose you set the question. Explain how uh, this agricultural concept is related to the environment. Okay? And you have, you, have, you have started it like that. We explain that. There we shall, we shall understand that you are testing someone's understanding. Now, when you start a question, you start a question like, assess the contribution of so and so in the development of the Ugandan society. Because you have used the assess, okay, you are testing for some degree of knowledge which that person must have attained. Okay? Now when you state, uh, also you go on and set the question like uh, analyze. Okay? Uh, you are using that vocabulary. That means that you are testing certain behavior. So I encourage you to validate the terminologies of setting, okay, in order to accomplish the goals. And indeed, there are high level questions and low level. When I look at this question in my, in my uh, teacher's guide, mm. activities of interpretation, most of them begin with the word support, 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 mm. meaning that they are questioned to ask people that uh, ability of creating, synthesizing, but not, not remembering as the, the, the root mood section of it is to create. They are questions of creating, synthesizing, not actually just remembering because uh, 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 going, uh, going uh, there has to be questions such as name, list, uh, state, but here the question is suppose, suppose, uh, imagine you are, you've been appointed as minister. But did, but, did, but did you look at the different activities? The activities were open. Mm. They were even what? Explain, you get what I'm saying. Mm. But in the scenario down there, the activity of interpretation, I told you it's summing up for that one. It's it's just now wanting your thoughts. They don't want you get what from what you you've learned in all the other now come and create knowledge, explain, you get what analyze, synthesize and give us what you understand. Suppose you are now the one of those shoes. At first, at first, when you're doing different activities, those small activities, we can even tell you list, name, go and identify. You get what I'm trying to mean. There we are sending you out. We are we are trying to, to see where they have a knowledge. Can you differentiate between a camera and a camcorder? Can you differentiate between a phone and a, and a radio? You get what I'm trying to mean? Yes. But now when we come to the activity of integration, we want to see your ability to integrate all this knowledge together and make meaning and solve a problem. Solve a societal problem. So why do we want to put it? Because you know at the end you are going to be a manager. You get, you're, you're not going to be an identifier anywhere. You, you are going to be a manager. Now, suppose you are in that position. Can you add all this knowledge that you got where I told you identify, where I told you name, where you list, give? Now, can you, if you are now the boss, the big boss in these shoes, can you be able to aggregate all the other knowledge and 
hiyo zikia to solve the challenge yes more what you was talking about was uh, avoiding stating questions that are not related to society or questions that require open that are open ended that is require direct answers that is what he avoided and he said so long as you may use words like state uh, or other uh, other words okay but are they related to the society you must relate the question to the society such that the given concept carries uh, makes more meaning and on the addition to that by the way, i think even the activity of integration apart from the scenario because the scenario why because his problem was that the scenario says suppose i assume yes that is a scenario we are setting a societal problem because in this world we are in we are not sure whether you have ever come across that challenge or not you get it right however we we put you in the shoes of those people have ever now we are trying to tell because down here when you come to the tasks we ask questions like how because i can ask you suppose you are the manager of uh, a new company maybe called uh, uh, maybe a, a new shoe making company and from nowhere fire burns it as a student of uh, maybe uh, biology or entrepreneurship how best would you cater for the losses now how has come in tasks we bring back the how we want you to now but now we are applying the knowledge directly into the scenario or the challenge you get it right so it comes in that the scenario will always remain as an assumption because that's not an, a true happening you get it right but we are assuming but the questions will go back to the normal questions that uh, like you, you want them are we there you you look very well in the book you will see that the scenario goes there in assumptions about it because those are not true happenings but they have happened somewhere hmm? now like the inflation that is not inflation but the higher prices they happen but they may not have affected you because for you seven thousand is nothing you get what i'm trying to do. but we are saying i assume that is a very big race to other people what will you do as the leader of the country to solve that you get what i'm trying to do. now what has come back now to you that put yourself in those shoes even when you're not there are we together yes. because today you're not there but tomorrow you may be the major issue that is going to lead us to something to do today you know in the competence based curriculum i was with uh with, with dr esther she told me that hey you want me in my experience again i told him this students have to do something we can't leave when you've not done something now basing on what we've talked about <coughs> basing on what the teachers have added and have told you that for you to see whether a student has tried to understand all the different outcomes that we are talking about you sound it with an activity of integration it sounds all those those small small learning outcomes that we are looking at because i told you that those small out, those learning outcomes add up they break down the competence do you remember that the outcomes break down the full competence because if you look even if i don't have a full competence and you give me a learning outcomes i'll tell you the, the competence i'll tell you the competence was like this you will say are you are you uh, which doctor or no but it's simply because i know very well that the learning outcomes must be pieces from the competence you get what i'm saying so today as we are here i want you to be keen at least let me hope that you will learn how we make scenarios and how we ask tasks that will bring out the competence very well. You have to make sure that each and every area of the competence is catered for. Not, it may not be catered for fully in the scenario, but in the equations which follow the scenario, it will cater for it. And sometimes if you see that the scenario is, cannot be catered, the scenario you've given will not bring out the whole competence. You can give two activities of integration on one topic. But in most cases, we don't want to give more than one activities of integration on one topic. Because, one scenario can have over five questions. One scenario like this, I can provide it, it's within that topic. I can make sure that every question that I want to ask is asked from there. I don't know where they are getting me. If I set a scenario very well, I can make sure that all questions that I want that will bring out the competence can be asked from there. Rather than having more than one activities of integration, somewhere where I was, they asked me that question, that can you have more than one activity of integration on one topic? Yes, but we discourage it. We, dis we I encourage you instead 
to formulate a very good scenario which can allow you to ask more than three to four, five questions. In most cases, we don't want to go again uh, out of five questions. They, they are for what? You can ask three to four questions and they'll be able to sum up the whole competency in those questions. So, today we are here, read of evaluation. Um, by the end of the session, participants should be able to understand the features of an evaluation grid and the construction and construction of an evaluation grid based on the topic of a particular subject. Why am I giving you this? It may seem different, but it's the same. When you make an activity of integration, the next issue is to evaluate it. However, after making the activity of integration, the next issue is to evaluate it. How do we evaluate an activity of integration? We evaluate an activity of integration using a certain table, most especially having like four to five columns. It must have the output, it must have the basis of evaluation. Basis of evaluation is like, what is your marking guide? If you've asked a particular question, what do you base on to know that the student has attempted it well or badly? You get it right. That is the basis of evaluation. So there is output. Output is what you expect. For example, if a scenario, I put up a scenario, the scenario is aiming at knowing how maybe you can help students connect on internet and communicate to people abroad. That is the output. Con connecting and connecting on in internet and attending a debate, non so that is the output we want. As a must, whatever you're going to do, we want people to connect to internet and communicate and attend a what a, a, a debate. That is the output. Now, how will I know that the boy or the girl has really, for example, the first question was out uh, mentioned the different items that you need to make the debate work. You get it right. So one says a model, you name them, you say that. Me as a teacher, I know. For you to connect to internet and connect to that debate, first of all, you need a computer. Number two, you need a power source. Number three, you need the adapter, maybe. Number four, you need maybe uh, a, a microphone. If not, you need a headphone which has a microphone. You get it? Number three, you need a loudspeaker for the whole congregation to hear. Those are all ICTs. Number four, and then number six, number seven, for example, you need um, a, 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 an internet source. For example, a router, a modem, a phone which can hotspot, things of that nature. Uh, number, um, which other thing? Then you may, need, you may need, you need a link, a Zoom link, Google Meet link, or whatever, you, any link that can connect you. In other words, a, a, what we call a video conferencing software link. Mm -hmm. Because Zoom, Google Meet, all those are video conferencing softwares link. Uh, then you also need to install that exact software they have told you. If they have sent you a Zoom link, install Zoom. If it's Google, Google Meet, install Google Meet. If it's Skype, install Skype. Like that, you get what I'm going to mean. So by the time a student gives you all the things, I'm guaranteeing you. That is what we call the basis of evaluation. You will base on that to evaluate that. Anyone who gives me maybe seven of these, he has fully attained it. Seven and above, he's, he's, uh, he, he's, uh, he has attained it fully. Hmm? Then anyone who gives me maybe uh, uh, from, from maybe five to six, he has moderately scored. Below that, those are basic. You set that, because when you are evaluating, I think you can see this evaluation grid. It depends on the tasks you put, because what you are seeing here are the tasks. No, no, don't, don't go anywhere. Hey, okay, we're making, we're making it like, make, make it like. <laughs> Started from the beginning. Just press the, the, the arrow, just press the arrow. Current slide, current slide. Press the arrow. Press this arrow. Eh, no, no, this arrow. No, 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 this arrow. Good. Continuous the press. Continuous the press. Continuous the press. But how come it's... Okay, yeah, good. There. Mm -hmm. Now, from the scenario you gave, we no longer need the scenario anymore. 
Now what we need are the questions being answered. Now question number one will have its output. You remember my question? My question was, number one, identify the different ICDs. What question is here? Expect delivery from, uh, there is no question. Now, my number one question will come here. Here. It's the one now they'll be answering around here. They'll be answering the different items that we expect now. Here in output, what I'm going to write here is, I expect a student to give the items which will connect us to the debate period. This is the expected delivery from the learner in, the, in line with the competency. But yes, in line with the competence, but with the question that you ask. Because the competence, I told you, may have several questions. Eh? So the number one question was trying to answer the first portion of the competence which say that the student should know the, uh, the different items. I think that was number two. The different items, the different ICTs. So here you come and say, the expected output is a student should be able to name the items which will help us to connect to the debate. So the basis of evaluation, I list them. Mod uh, computer, uh, model, uh, microphone, uh, anything, all of them, eh? zoom, one, mm. so any, and then for you, you go down here and write that. Any student, you write it somewhere, and say any student who gives me 10 out of these 12 mentioned, or you can, you can set a range and say, anyone who gives me from 9 to, to 10 will have achieved fully. The terminology there we use, we call it, is an accomplished achiever. The moment someone has scored to your expectations or beyond, he's an accomplished achiever. Then you can say and say, anyone who, achieve, who score, who gives me at least from five, I mean, or from five to eight of these points will be called a moderate achiever. Anyone who gives me maybe from five, eight of these points will be called a moderate achiever. But anyone who gives me less than five is called a best achiever. And what does best achievement mean? That he has scored less of the competencies. The moderate achiever has scored um, some of the competencies that are required. Um, an unaccomplished achiever has scored either most or all. Now, that last, that last portion of, um, of uh, an accomplished achiever is very funny. There, when you are scoring it, we say this. A person who has scored from nine and above, that's what we say, is called an accomplished. Now, if someone, if someone gives you trade off, now, when you are giving a comment as a class teacher, someone who has given you only nine will score a three true. But you say he has scored most of the necessary competencies in this area. However, someone who gives you to roof or even more, you say he has scored, he has scored all the expected competencies. Are you getting it? Because I put a range that from nine and above, a student is an accomplished achiever. But it's not true that a person has scored nine and a person has scored to roof, they are in the same, you can give the same comment. No, they both have three true, but one will get a better comment than the other. One who has nine, will get, we shall say that he has a comment that this student is an accomplished achiever. However, he has scored most of the uh, expected uh, competencies. However, someone who has given 10 or 11 or 12 points, all of them are right, you say he has scored all the expected competencies from this topic. Are we there? Now, I, 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 I hurried to go on that assessment, why, I mean, on, on those comments, why? Because when I now turn to this, this is where the task comes from. In that question that I've asked, we look at three things. We look at the relevance of the answer, we look at the accuracy of the answer, and we look at the coherence. Coherence is how the 
the answers flow, connect to each other. Do they you, you may give questions having answers which are not flowing. For example, if I tell you to, to, to draft for me, um, let me use English. I tell you to draft for me a formal letter. A formal letter. Maybe inviting the president to come here and attend maybe the inauguration of someone and someone. Any, anybody? Take me, take me to a formal letter. Is it below? Ask Harry, Harry, continue. Uh, no, 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 go up, go, go, go the other side. Take it. Uh -huh. uh, come back. Come back, come back, come back. Around there. Now, if in this active term integration, for example, the active term integration of word processing, for example, they say, your class is planning an end of year party scheduled for 21st November this year. It will take place in the main hall, starting from 8 30. What process now the task is? What process? That is the task. What process? A later inviting the head teacher and members of staff to the party. Now, what are you trying to mean? The scenario is. You have a challenge in your school that you have a party. That is a challenge, for example, a scenario. Now, everyone is there and Who can draft a, a, a letter on computer? I will say, are you man? You study ICT. Come, come, come. The task is word process for us a letter. Drafting a, a, a letter is word processing a letter. Mm -hmm. So, word process for us a letter, inviting the teacher and the member of staff to the party. Now, that task is very funny. If a student in English learned how to write a letter and has a skill of typing, you may expect that all students will do that, but it's not true. Now we have to look at all the rules of a letter. There are those who will do it partially. Do you know that someone can put the date at the end? <laughs> Another one can sign on the other side. Like, so now you, a teacher of ICT, should not only be in ICT, you should be knowing how a letter flows, an official. So you're going to mark both English and ICT. And that's how a project, because I've not talked about the project, but that's how projects are going to be done. They'll be integrated. You can give one project to a student, but it's multidisciplinary. An English teacher will come and mark his portion. ICT will come and also mark his portion. Another like that. So even here, it's like that. Go, go to this. Now, check a student like this, this one. He has written a letter where the dirt is above, is the number one thing. But that is a formal letter for real, because there is an addresser's address, there is an address's address, there is a reference, and there is a dear, and, but if you see, 15th November, Chamba Day, Chamba, uh, Chamba Kade College School, PO, uh, there is even no PO box, there is box, uh, kind regards, that is where he has started, <laughs> then he comes here, this one here, then he comes the invitation for, uh, uh, Guys, this is a letter, but now we are marking it how. Was the student, was the letter a letter, a formal letter? Yes. Yes, it's a formal letter. It is a formal letter, even when it has its challenges. So meaning that it is relevant. Three, his score was a full three. It's a formal letter. It's relevant. Now, when we go, was it a natural letter? To be realistic, check where the date is. Now there, it's the onus is on you. If the, the, the mistakes are many, a student can never score a zero in confidence based. The worst is one. For me, if I was marking this student, I'll give him one. <laughs> Let him answer is three. But accuracy is, is one. Now, coherence, are the things flowing for God's sake? No. Check where the letter is. It? Now check where you and your staff who invited to whatever. Uh, party, it will take place in preliminary hall. This will be on 21st, whatever. It will start on 8. E, check how is you know, even the, 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 he has not organized the wording very well. I also give one for coherence. Now, excellence, let me tell you this, brother and sister. Excellence mark is the mark for a teacher. I don't want to tell people, but I tell them we don't just give it anyhow. Be mean, as mean as possible with your excellence mark. Excellence mark is only and only and only and only given when a student has given an extraordinary thing that you've asked for a letter, but he has gone ahead maybe even to say that. To make it even better, 
This letter can be even mail merged. The moment the student gives something that you, div you didn't even ask for, that to, to send it to other members, rather than making other copies, typing other copies, we shall mail merge by doing this and the other. That is now extraordinary. A student has gone to, to, to what no one would even expect. They would give an excellent mark. But even then, if the tasks were three, it means he, has, he must be excellent in task one, task two, task three. All the three tasks, he gave extraordinary things, which is impossible. That excellent mark is rare. But one day, we were uh, in a certain school, Namidihangwa, I will mention. They gave, they called us for the same. The student had answered the three tasks, they were three. The three tasks with extraordinary explanations. But the teachers we are calling, we give, we don't give. They said, they call, I said, let's drive. We are near there because Mukona and we went there and said, you guys, let's, I explained to them that we give this mark when a student is extra, has given an extraordinary additional answer to the normal ones you, you had put as your basis. Because in your basis of variation, you, he accomplished it. But he has even added on what you didn't ask for, and it's excellent. You give. You get it right. You say, test one, he has it. Test two, he has it. Test three. If you, why are you mean give the young man? They all laughed and gave the mark, the mark to them. Because he deserved it. But if he's excellent in one, two, and the third one is not, don't give. He must be excellent, giving an extraordinary in task one, question two, question three, all of them. But the good thing now here, this question that I ask, we ask him here, he has only one task. Meaning it's marked out of nine. Are you getting what I'm trying to mean? It's marked out of nine, but plus the excellent mark, it becomes 10. So when we are adding, we shall say three for relevance, three for utterance, three for coherence. Now we look at excellence always remains behind. We don't bring it. We only bring it when you are putting his score over. That's when we add it on. So it would have been nine, but plus the one excellence, it would be 10. For example, if scored three for relevance, one for accuracy, and one for coherence, that is three, four, five. Right. You say five, not out of nine, but out of ten, because of the extra mark. You get it? What, what if I'm coming again? Each question, each, each relevance, accuracy, and coherence are scored three, three, three. But excellence is scored one. In fact, we don't want anyone to look at excellence until when, until when you finally scored these three. Relevance, accuracy, and coherence. So when you are going to, to, to express has two tasks. If a question has two tasks, like the one I gave, or in mine had three. If it has two tasks, it's okay, we shall continue and finish up. If it has three tasks, for example, what do we do? It has, let's start with two. If it's two, you add nine plus nine? 18. 18. Now, the one remains, you get it, the one is, comes only once. Some people thought that each question is marked out, if task is marked out of 10, 10, 10, it's wrong. Each question is marked out 9, 9, 9, but there is always an excellent mark in the back. But whenever you are going to make a final mark, you bring it. So if there are two tasks, you add 9 plus 9, then plus 1. It's not true that some people think that you add 9 plus 1, then plus 9 plus 1, which is wrong. The excellence mark remains 1, no matter the number of tasks. Are you getting what I'm trying to explain? The excellence mark remains one, no matter no, the number of tasks. That's why I've said nine plus nine, then later plus one, because they are two tasks. So nine plus nine is 18, then plus one is 19. So if you have two tasks in your scenario, then that scenario would mark out of 19. Simply because of that extra one which comes in. Now, if there are three, it will be nine plus nine, plus nine, then later plus one. Because I told you that excellence mark is given when I've looked through all the three tasks, all the two tasks, have you done them excellent? If yes, 
the one will be awarded to you. If not, but I guarantee you, be mean with your one. Don't give it. Some students will take everything, yet they don't deserve. And when you give them all that, they will become so confident that they think that they are. Keep it. At least let that one save you. I'm not teaching you to be mean, but for real. It's rare to find such students, but they are there. Who can give you extraordinary answers in each and every question? So from that, uh, take us to the table that I want. Imagine my student has scored 311. 311, that is a uh, five, right? Out of 10, because it was one task. Out of 10. Now, I have to multiply by three. Why? Because the identifiers are three. Take me down. Take me down. Um, because the identifiers are three, again, take me down. Is it done? Is it done? It's done. Eh? No, press escape. Just, just go back. Press escape and go to evaluation. Just go to evaluation. No, 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 no. Close that whole thing. Close it. Put evaluation. Evaluation that one. Take me to no. Uh, take me around there. First, take me up again. Uh, take me. Up. I think. Take me up again. Take me down. Oops. Now, this is what? To, it depends on the number of tasks per activity of integration. That is to say, one task is marked out of nine plus one mark for excellence. If the student deserves it, uh, to get the final mark, you divide the student's score over ten. That is to say, if a student has scored seven, for example, Three, two, two. I think that is seven. Five, six, seven. Yeah, three, two, two. That would be seven. You see? Seven out of ten times three. Why times three? Because the identifiers are three. We told you someone will either fall in a one or a two or a three. People who are in one are best, two are moderate, three are accomplished. Go down. And I show them. Go down completely. Uh -uh. Go down. You check this table. This is the table which teaches us why people are scored that way. If, for example, I multiply my person here who has, for example, 3 out of 10, eh? I mean, uh, 5 out of 10 times 3. And the mathematicians, 5 out of 10 times 3, I think that is 2, not so. There's 2.0. And your marks should be presented in one decimal pl uh, place as a mask. No rounding off after that one decimal place. You only round off before the decimal place. You get it? For example, if it's, I, for example, if I say 5 over 10 times 3 and it gives me 2.162, I can round off and say it's 2.2. But I can't round off, for example, if this was 2.89. 2.89 and say, let me say it's a 3. No, it's not allowed. You can only round off before you leave the decimal place, but not after the decimal place. Are you getting what I'm trying to mean? Yeah. I see the mathematicians are getting there very fast. But <laughs> what I'm trying to mean, <laughs> what I'm trying to mean, <laughs> if this was 2.5 or 2.57, eh? 2.57. I can't say that since this is 2.5, let me make this one a 3. I cannot. But if this is 2.57, I'll say it's a 2.6. You get what I'm trying to do? Before the decimal place, I can round up. But after the decimal place, I cannot have one. Are you getting it? Because the moment you round off, you'll, you'll make everyone go to the nearest figure, the nearest figure, which is wrong. So, that is it. So, uh, like I've said that, if my student, 5 out of 10 times 3 is a 2.0, then he falls in the category, this one. 
which ranges from 1.5 to 2.4. Are we there? If someone has scored a 2.0, he falls in this in this. So meaning that he's a moderate achiever, which will explain that he has achieved uh, some competencies that are required. Here there is a column that is missing. On this side, this will be called basic. Here, this will be called moderate. This one, we call, uh, uh, we call them accomplished. Accomplished is the one who has gotten from, from, from 2.5 and above. Then uh, moderate is the one from 1.5 to 2.4. Then uh, uh, the other one was, of course, there. Don't just leave that place. Now, what if there were two bases of evaluation? For example, one has scored uh, seven out of, uh, no, 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 let me say, 10 out of uh, 19 times, uh, times, uh, times three. Always is times three. What do we get, mathematicians? 10 out of 19 times three. Then, I mean, uh, 10 out of 19 times three, because if there are two tasks, then it's 19 under there. So 10 out of 19 times three. Three remains a constant because those are the three levels. I think it's around 1.7, not so? 1.1? Size Okay, let's say it's 1.7. So if it's 1.7, unfortunately, I wanted it to be under here. So that I show you that if someone was between here, would have been a low achiever. Okay, basically. So in most cases, we give a chance for this person to redo. Because he has scored very few competences, meaning that we cannot stand and say we have a very competent student. Right? So you can give him a chance to redo, and then you see whether he can improve. So, take us to the other table, previous table. So, all these marks that you see, take us previous. Uh -huh. All this that you see there, this is how the report cards, I mean, the, 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 the marks of the students will be kept <laughs> by your dose or your DVs, I mean, your head, deputy head teacher academics. Each competence, competence, topic one, we call it competence one here. We define it as competence one. We shall score this learner one as this. In competence two, he has scored this. Oh, these are topics, these are topics. Eh? Each topic is marked and, the active of interpretation is marked and given. Active interpretation is marked and given. Active like that, like that, like that. Yes, and we don't, uh, we are not allowed to add it and sum it up. Why? In competence space, a student is only graded, or in competence space, a student is only graded and measured in a particular competence. We don't add and divide and say, let's add all of them, no. We shall know that via uh, introduction to computing, he's very good. But he's not good at maybe programming. When it comes to, 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 to databases, wow, very excellent. So that if a market wants someone who is excellent in databases, you just talk, go look, uh, say, ah, this one, this one, databases. There are the things we have been having, whereby you write to us, we serve everything and say, he has a ninth. But when you go to programming, he's the worst. Now, if a company comes and it's a programming company, we just tell them there is a boy called Jonathan. Even when he failed all others, he's just very excellent. And uh, Jonathan is taken by the programming. Hey, Jonathan, I'm sorry if you are there. Jonathan is taken, <laughs> is taken, and the company, you get what I'm trying to mean. So that's why we leave, we don't uh, 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 aggregate them and then get the average. No. Leave them like that. If uh, someone who wants a programmer comes, he will say, I want this one who achieved higher. If someone wants a maybe database manager comes and say, mm -mm, I need this one. And that will help. And even when you get to A level, you will know 
who will take what? Because there are some people who by mistake go to every seminar and pass sciences at the end. And they say, I'm going for sciences. But when behind me here, he has been feeling them terribly. So there I will say, mm, 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 no, 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 take, take, take. You say, save yourself from the embarrassment. Take us. It will help so much. So, brothers and sisters, in our groups, I request, in our groups, helped by our teachers and myself, because I'm your teacher also, we are going to develop a simple activity of integration with not more than three tasks. Even if it's one, it's okay. But each group will decide. A simple activity of integration with not more than one or two tasks. Simple. You're not going to grade it. That's what I want to see and you tell us why you came up with that. Simple. Get a secretary and some and a chairperson very fast. In 10 minutes we shall be done because that does not need us to overthink. The, the, groups, are, the groups are basing, you will just form the groups basing on the subjects that you, you have. If you are in history, be in history. If you are in geography, be in geography.
you get it. For example, March, if you're talking about fractions, you can't even draw an, an orange, which is divided into parts. You've not given the answer, but you're showing them as one. You get it. That is a good matter. So I expect you to think of a scenario of a challenge in the society which can be solved by math. Then ask them questions that really can force them to solve that challenge. I'm not going to give you an example. Yes. And then you borrow the example. You can, you can even look at any of the examples of the activities in the book. What are it and then make your own.
have five minutes to go. Five minutes to go. Can I share a bit? Before we get there, can I share? I'm trying to put it down. What is this land? If you think about it and agree about it, then you can do it.
Yarude. Ito karude. So this is all level mathematics from mathematics all level. All of mathematics. So our main topic is algebra. Main topic here is algebra. So like we are given an uh, area. Now please may you listen. Even when you uh, are listen, because you get the lesson, you will learn the lesson from this. So yeah, our first question we want to to find the area of an object. Like find the area of uh, a rectangular garden, which Mr. Msoke uses for growing cabbages every season. Like as was shown in the diagram, a diagram, yeah? That's my part A. Then part B, suppose that our value for X is given. Then we want to compute the length. If the value is given, we want to compute the length in our diagram. So our question one is about finding the area of a given land, which Mr. Musoke uses for growing cabbages every season. Then uh, question number two, suppose that our diagram given is about finding the, uh, the perimeter of a given triangle. Given the diagram below about Mr. Msoke's home building, like they want to find the total distance around the figure, all around is home. Then, part B, you want to calculate the length, uh, the length of the longest side from the shape. The shape was given about Mr. Mosoka's building. So they want to find the longest side from the shape given. Suppose that our x is given, then you can be able to find or calculate the longest side of his home. Question number three. This is about find the total surface area. Find the surface area. Given the diagram below about Geoffrey's crop farm of bananas. The diagram is here. They calculate the total surface area of Geoffrey's banana farm. So this question Suppose that we are given a rectangle. The sides, the length is given, and the, the width is also given. So they want to find the total surface area of Joshua's farm. So from there, you can compute if the values are given. So from here, the student will be able to calculate the area. The student will be able to calculate the perimeter of a given figure. And the students will be able to calculate the total surface area of a given figure, say it's a rectangle. So after knowing the, the sides, 
if the values are given, because these are from unknowns, calculated from unknowns, if the values are given, so the students will be able to calculate uh, the area of uh, a rectangle, then the perimeter of a triangle, then the surface area of a given farm. So there the student will be able to calculate. What is the, the, the outcome? What do you expect in that scenario? Because I told you an article of interpretation should try to solve a societal problem. What were you trying to let the students in case they get out to solve? <laughs> so the outcome in here. The student will be able to calculate if like for example, I have a given land, like the, the land title. Is it? A, given a given land. I know its length and its width. So the student will be able to calculate that area. Clap uh, for them, and I make some little comments here. Uh, let me read for. Uh, uh, let me request him to read the scenario once again. Read the scenario, and I give you the scenario I've gotten from your own whatever. Uh -huh. Remember, a scenario has to solve an activity of integration. Should prepare a student to prepare to solve future problems or future challenges problem. in the society. So read yours. How to find the area of an object? That's number one. No, the, the scenario itself. I need the scenario. Find the area of a rectangle, a rectangular garden, which Mr. Msoki uses for growing cabbages every season as drawn in the figure below. Okay. Now, what if someone writes this? Says, Mr. Mokasa is a farmer in a serious land wrangle with the neighbors who want to extend in his land at all costs. His elder brother has advised him uh, to consult his son, who is at university doing engineering, and survey to measure the land that he's using to grow cabbage. Task A. Basing on the above land provided, calculate. Huh? Calculate the size of the land given the original measurement of one site which is named X. Your scenario and my scenario, do you, do you see that there is a very big difference between the two? Do you see that even in mathematics I've been able to first formulate a societal problem? Because trust me, there is a societal problem about land. Hmm? Simply because I'm not a mathematician, yes, I've not made it very perfect. But if I knew, I would even make it more perfect. But I'm basing on the scenario of Rand Langos that the brother of Mr. Mukasa has advised him to use his, his son of engineering to come and they measure the land. The good thing, they already knew the measurement of one side. You get it, right? So basing on that one side that is known, it would help them no others. Known so? Yes. Yeah. Then I, I went ahead and even said B. Using the known measurement X, calculate the largest side of the garden. The garden. Yeah. Even in C, I would do the same if I had time, but I don't have time. The next group. Another is what I'm trying to mean. Let's make this first of all. We are training people to solve society challenges. Because they are living what it has to carry here. Huh? They are unrecurrent. No subject doesn't have this now. <coughs> Good afternoon to you all. We are from the finance department and we are gaining a topic from the different media's we see. But we are today
today and now we are specifically under a topic language of color. We are under a topic language of color. So the question to the learner is like an event. It's an event. A birthday party has been organized by this has been the, the artist has been asked to organize a birthday event. So, at the, at the birthday party, the artist is expected like, to do the following things. First of all, the materials at the party are one. The number of tables are four. The number of people to attend, they are 15. And then the flower vessels are four. The number of flower vessels are three, and then the, then the designs have to be under one tent. So, the learner as the artist is required, one, how best can the learner show the language of color at the birthday party? That is to say, in table organization, the plate distribution at the tables, and then the color of the vases, and then the tent decoration. And as an artist, the event organizer, because the, the, the learner is the artist and has been asked to organize the party, him as an artist, he has to make sure that everybody at the party has an invitation card to reveal the value or the purpose of the party. So, me as a teacher, what do I expect from this child or this learner? One, distribution of the color, because our topic is language of color. So, the color combination. How is the learner trying to combine the different colors he or she has? One, the colors of the, the table, and then the colors of the plates they are going to use, and then the color of the flower vases they have. So, and another thing is, like the distribution. How, how has the learner distributed these vases on the tables and then the plates? So, that is all I expected. That's what I expect from the learner. That's all we have. Your scenario, it was better. It was better. <laughs> it was better. But but what if you know you know I, I, I always request when we are making it's like one person who was there but he went he was wondering that why do we always use like assumptions in this we, we want real life situations so we assume here. I, I beg to that you read your scenario again, as I also read mine. But oh. mine is coming from yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, a birthday party has been organized by you as the artist. The following are the materials at the party. One, the number of tables are four. The number of people at the party are 15. And then the number of flower vases are three. You have one tent. And then the 15 plates of different colors at the party. So you as an artist or the learner, how best would you show language of color at the birthday party? One, in table organization. Two, plate distribution. Three, the colors of the vases and the tent decoration. Then, as an artist, since we are the organizer of the party, like, how have you made sure that everyone at the party has an invitation card to reveal the purpose of the party? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, now what if I say, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not so gender sensitive. Mr. Kato has a birthday party, and you have been identified as the best decorator around the village. been identified as the um, in that way he has requested you to advise him 
on the different items that would be needed to make a very colorful birthday party that uh, a birthday party that can attract the eyes of all the modern visitors that he invited task number one advice on the colors and decoration of the tables two how would the uh, flower vessels be uh, organized to make it a little more unique and attractive four uh, decorate uh, three decorate a no decorate a colorful invitation card that is not easily uh, that is not that cannot be easily duplicated or something of that nature I, I, are you feeling it it's like it's a real party um it's like something is real eh? it's I, I don't know whether you are getting something different from eh? it's something real and we are imagining that indeed there is a party and you have been identified as the potential person in most cases, those people, we don't dictate for them. You just tell them the colors I want. That I want this and this and this. And then they do for you wonders. For like interior design. For you, just tell them what you want. And tell them, please, do for me the best. You tell them that, oh, what, what you want. Uh, that oh, maybe you have been chosen as an interior designer. Mr. So-and-so is coming back from abroad. And he wants to have the best, uh, maybe, envious room like he had in, 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 in Seattle. Someone called it uh, USA, but for me, I'll call it something of that nature. So you, you, you give the chance to the decorator, right? the interior designer, to design for you the best out of this. So don't dictate for them. These students should have a sense of art. And they, 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 they will propose for you things, and you also wonder, wow. Eh? I didn't think about it. But if you propose for them, you are limiting their chances of thinking. You give them just a task to decorate for a very colorful party as an artist. They will decorate for you. Thank you very much. Next group. Good afternoon, members. Um, we, were we are teachers of the English language. And like they told us to at least come up with an example of an activity of integration, this is what we managed to come up with. Uh, we, we came up with a scenario which states, you have witnessed children during the lockdown working to sustain their home needs while the schools were closed.
closed. Uh, the parents in some homes gave up their responsibilities and instead left these to their children. Yeah. So, our, we only made one question because this is an example. We said, cite out the dangers children might face during the work and how best would you guide the children to survive these problems or dangers? Uh, we came up with our output or what we expect. So the output is uh, we have examples of probably the accidents or problems these students might face. That is uh, road accidents, coming home late. For the girls, they could get raped while they're at the place of work, kidnap. Now, we know that we have not given all the examples of output, but we give an allowance that if a student gives more than it qualifies, we shall mark. Now, our basis of uh, evaluation is going to be on the grammar uh, the students will use. Uh, we, shall use on, we shall base on proper usage of the phrases by the students. Uh, we shall look at spellings, uh, the diction, and many others. Uh, the competency skills that we expect or we are looking at here is knowledge. Do the students know about uh, the accidents? Or do they even know about uh, uh, that there are, there are children who, who are used, or they are, they are being used in child labor? We are looking at values. As the, the students try to explain to us how they would help in the situation, we realize that, OK, there are some values in these students. Uh, we put one that is a little bit similar. We look at the attitude. As a student discusses his, his, uh, his solutions, we shall know if this student is concerned or he just doesn't want to know about other children. That is it. said I wanted it. Fully, I was satisfied. So, so. Anyway, the truth is they, they, they have done it justice. Eh? They have given a societal challenge and they have been able to even they give the guiding tasks. So, to, to me, it was, and they have given a basis of evaluation and the output they expect. Even when, for English, I expected maybe they, to me, I said maybe they say, write a memo. Eh? Oh, but when they told me the, the basis, how they are going to mark it, I said, okay, they just wanted it plain. They wanted just mark English. Eh? So the moment I, I was going to put that complaint, why didn't you say maybe a memo or a report? But when they gave me the basis of evaluation, I rested my case. Thank you. The next group. Good afternoon, class. How are you? I think people are not in the audience. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Yeah, we are here also as the history class to present to you a scenario or an activity of integration. We need, I want to first read to, uh, to you our scenario so that you get to know other activities and observations and the, everything as entailed in this, our work. Uh, the scenario is, assuming you are a member of, of, Ugand, of a Ugandan parliament, observe the current situation, constitution and the situation in the parliament and suggest, suggest areas that require amendment. Yeah, that is our scenario. In this, uh, we want our, uh, the student to understand or to have competences uh, in different categories. 
according to my observation as a student, the, arm, the arms of the government overrule the parliament. The ruling party overtakes the House, incompetent members of the parliament, and corruption in the House. So looking at all those observations, uh, we want the student to assume that he's a member of parliament. Looking at all these situations, how is he able to uh, help uh, the society to move on in such a, a scenario, or you can call it a saga? Uh, a student ought to understand who is a parliamentarian, what is a parliament itself, and the definition of it. I would explain or give a definition of a parliament as a national legislative body from all over the country meet to draft debate and pass laws through which the institutions of government endeavor to guide the country's progress. So there are articles in the parliament or in the house which I can think about uh, which ought to be thought about in the constitution. Articles of the legislative branch the executive branch, the judicial branch, the state, the amendments, the dates of the country, the supremacy, the oaths, and ratification. So a student ought to understand that while he's talking about the constitution, they understand that these things have to be thought about as well. So what are the requirements of a member of parliament? Uh, we have the age the brackets of 18 and above, education uh, level, which is A level and its equivalence. Uh, then the supporters, he ought to have at least 10 supporters or third voters in a constituency. Then he also must have the 3 million Ugandan shillings nomination fees. So with all that, uh, we went ahead to Look at the activities and the tasks. The student ought to understand activities of a member of a parliament and know the definition, know the steps taken to form a constitution and how to come up with a parliamentarian. So uh, with all that, we can give, as a teacher, I give, can give marks if a student is able to give those the, uh, to work out those tasks. If he has passed very well and given me the definition, I would give him out of three, definition of a parliament. And if he has given the qualifications, or he has thought about the qualifications of a parliamentarian, and he has also thought about what exactly to, uh, what is there is affecting the, 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 the communities, and also, show an impression of yearning to change the situations at hand. So if that is expressed in the writing, I can consider this one as a, uh, a moderate student. Uh, I can consider him having shown the values. I can look at him as having a good attitude I can look at him as having or having attained skills uh, of how to handle certain problems and uh, also having knowledge of the subject of the constitution and what is entailed in it and also having an understanding of the same. I beg to lay. As you beg to lay on the table, I also beg you come on. And lead to ask the scenario once again. The scenario is, yeah. assuming you are a member of, of a Ugandan parliament, because there are very many parliaments of a Ugandan parliament, observe the current situation in the House and in the Constitution and suggest areas that require amendment. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Now, the scenario would have been good, but you've coupled a scenario with uh, another question. You get what I'm trying to mean? 
within this scenario, I think you also re uh, realized it as you went on. I saw you and you said, oh, I didn't see this. So, <laughs> so you are right. I also saw you that you, 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 you had it. Eh? But the, the scenario would have been very, very good if the question was separated. Now, for example, here mine. Eh? I'm using yours. Eh? That um, you've said, imagine you are a member of parliament on the opposition side who has observed what is happening in parliament, ranging from bills being passed without debate, giving out uh, big sums of money for barrier of a single person, um, rumors about uh, bribes for votes, among others. Task A. As a historian, explain how you would rate the parliament of Uganda basing on the examples of other parliaments elsewhere in the, in the world. B. Which areas should they improve or maintain for a better performance of parliament? You get it right. I've rested my case around there. I get it. Right. So I'm not saying yours is not right. It's good. But don't mix a question or a task. We call it a task. A task with a scenario. You get it right. Leave a scenario be a scenario. Let the task be tasks. And like I told you, the rules are the questions should be reflecting or should, should be gotten from the scenario. If, for example, I put a question here like this, um, why wouldn't we uh, expel all the, the parliamentary members in Uganda? You know, it's not connected to, the, to the, the thing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the way they are behaving. You get what I'm doing to me. Maybe that would come as in this format that which punishment would you give all the members? That one now will be connected to the question. You get it? Yeah, so the, question, the scenario should connect with the questions. Thank you very much. Next or the last group? Not the last group. So, good afternoon, members. You're fine. So, uh, this is a geography team. Uh, the topic is physical features in geography. So, now our scenario is: uh, imagine that you are you are a tourist guide who is required to take tours around Uganda. With knowledge you've obtained, plot the physical features on the map of Uganda. Question two, how advantageous is tourism to the development of your area? Question three, what are the likely challenges faced by tourists in your area? Question three, Suggest various solutions to the challenges mentioned above. These are the expected outcomes. Question number one. Uh, I expect students to draw a map of Uganda and allocate various physical features, like mountains, include uh, Renzoli, Mountain Elgon, Mountain Moroto plus and other features like the Great Rift Valley of Uganda, uh, the troughs or the basins like Lake Victoria and so on. Then uh, the ex expected out outcomes on the question number two, I expect students to give various advantages of tourism, like uh, that tourism, has, uh, tourism lead, leads to the development of infrastructure in various areas where these, tourist, uh, where the, these uh, physical or tourist attractions are. For example, roads. 
Uh, another advantage is that tourism promotes market to the local goods. Uh, another one, another advantage is, another advantage is that tourism uh, promotes foreign exchange. So, uh, then uh, number three, the expected outcomes uh, are the solutions to the challenges faced by these tourists. And I expect students to give out challenges like language barrier. Uh, the uh, no, uh, a solution to the language barrier, like uh, that every place where these tourist attractions are, are, at least that place should get a person who is linguistic to interpret to these tourists. Then, uh, poor infrastructure uh, in the areas where these tourist, tourist attractions are is uh, renovating those roads which are there or constructing other roads or other means of transport in such areas. So I submit it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I love your scenario. You can read it once again. I don't have any objection with your scenario. You can read it once again. Yeah, the scenario is very, very good. Imagine that you are a tour guide who is required to take tourists twice around Uganda. Mm. With knowledge you, op you have obtained, plot the physical features on the map of Uganda. Very good. Now, the problem I have is with the questions. Read your questions. Question number one. Uh, with knowledge you've obtained, plot the physical features on the map of Uganda. That is very okay. Question number two. How advantageous is tourism to the development of your areas? That is not okay. Question number three. What are the likely challenges mm. faced by tourists in your area? Now, like we say, when you are giving these questions, first of all, you should be talking to the student basing on the tasks that you've given them. So maybe you would say, what are the likely challenges you would face while moving? Because you task him to move around the whatever. Towards, you get what I'm trying to mean? Take it back to the scenario. Because you task the person, you told him that I want you to tour around these people. Now, again, you're asking the question, what are the challenges of tourism? You get, you get what I'm trying to mean? Mm -hmm, okay. I want you to put that, that question to the scenario. You get what I'm trying to mean? Which are the challenges, our likely challenges are you likely maybe to face while helping these people tour around the different tourist attractions in Uganda? You are involving, you're taking back to the scenario. You get it? You are doing the same question, but you are not show, you are showing that the question, the scenario is still relevant. You are still entrusting, it's all about him. Hmm? In this, in this, competence-based curriculum, we want to show the student that you are in charge. You have been identified. Now tell us which challenges you are going to meet. You are the one now educating us. Such so that, you can advise even the solutions that the government of Uganda can plot to make tourism work better. You get what I'm trying to mean? Don't isolate. Again, the moment you go and leave it to be eh, open, eh, then you are, you are going back with the old curriculum. Eh? You get what I'm trying to mean? In good faith, you've understood it. Very good. Thank you very much. Next book. Yes, please. Yes, please. In history? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Mm, mm. Mm. Yes, the moment you can Exactly. But why we want you to bring in the student, for example, tourism is facing a lot of challenges in Uganda of late. 
Now, if you don't want to imagine you say, as a student of geography, who is knowledgeable of the challenges that are happening in Uganda, now the scenario is done, full stop. Identify, okay, mention some solutions to it. You get what I'm talking about. Why they imagine they want to involve the student? Because the competence-based curriculum is talking to the student. Whatever you're doing, talk to the student. Whichever question you give, talk to the student. So that's why you see the most of imagine. But you, the way you are bringing it is very, very good. Probably involve the student. The major issue is involve the student. Even if it's not imagination, but give him to, make, to give the solution. Tell him to advise on as a student who is knowledgeable. To advise here and there like that. The moment he's involved, well and good. Thank you. Please, the floor is yours. that you you bland and the questions not so you you replied into realizing that somewhere somehow more so in the last ones eh? because in the first one they say as a student of C is it CRD identify the act the active the leisure activities that we are taking place in the story not so that was very very excellent now after the beyond they started what is it what is it you do not you say that you went off but if you would say Anything on the above story, what can you, and how would you define leisure? Basing on the above story, which activities are bad in leisure? Something you get what I'm saying. Which ones are good in leisure? You get what I'm saying. Don't leave the scenario alone. Refer to the scenario or the story or the, you get what I'm saying. But else, very good. Thank you. I think we're done. Wow, yeah, good. Uh, before I hand over the microphone to my boss, Dr. <laughs> Esther, uh, allow me to remind you of this. Alongside the activity of integration, there is what we call a project. The ministry and UNEB expect that at least each term, the worst you can do is give one project, but it will be like two to three. But if everything has failed, you can give one. And they even advise that it can be multidiscipline alien or multidiscipline. Uh, multidiscipline. For example, like the example we put there of writing a letter, typing a letter in computing. It has computer skills, it has literature skills which are there. It doesn't have geography at least. 
but at least English and computer can combine together. Physics and chemistry or math can combine together and they form one scenario. And how is it marked? The teachers will come together in a conveyor. According to you in math, what do you see? Did that. that, in that in, uh, for, for you, math, math, independently to add to me, he satisfied me. Then the one of uh, physics say, uh, 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 without this and this and the other, to me, he did satisfy me. But you have to make the student aware that this project is a multi-discipline project. You have to cater for this and the other and the other. So come up with something in relation to these topics that we've told you. For us, we, for us, we've told you about police. This one has told you maybe about algebra. The, there are topics which you can bring together. There are topics you can't bring together. So that a student can, teachers know what I'm talking about of, that, of those subjects. Me and English, we know because for me, I, I sit here and understand that we can work with uh, we can work with English and we do something very good. We can work with entrepreneurship and economics and do something very good. So, the teachers of the different subjects will know how they can guide their students to make a multidisciplinary kind of project. To save time and to make something more powerful and more, eh, they do more research that is really very, very good. So, as you are going out, on top of the uh, activities of integration, you'll be expected to give a project which you never will need. It's marked exactly, exactly like they mark uh, the activity of integration. It has four steps. As I've, I've explained them in the slide that I've not, uh, I've not discussed, but they are explained very well. So you'll have them and see them. Uh, unless there is any question, I beg to rest my case here. Thank you very much. I'm not overstaying, but I didn't request you to show the appreciation to Mr. Lugemua for what he has done to us. <laughs> Mr. Lugemua, we are so grateful. We must say that we've added a reasonable percentage to our survival in the profession. And as we move out, for school practice next season, we shall be confident because this is what we are to find. We shall keep in practice trying to understand this and that such that we become better. I thank you members for participating and I encourage you. These copies are going to be placed in the library so that you use them. However, you must wish well for others that after using it, please place it where you found it because we still have a few copies. We shall have more copies as we move on. But the few copies that are going to be placed there, try to use them and leave them in the same place where everyone is going to find them. I thank you for persevering to complete. This is what it means to achieve academically. You must be positive until the end of the journey. I wish you well. So at this moment, we are concluding. Um, I may call upon um, the staff to say a word or two. And then we wind up. First, we shall have Madam Josephine to, call, to, to give you one word or two in one minute, then Mr. Kavuba, and lastly, Mr. Matovu. Then we conclude the session. By the way, Mr. Kavuba is supposed to be the last. Reasons, reasons known to me and him. So, Madam Josephine, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Lugemwa, for the wonderful presentation. And thank you very much for the members of staff and uh, the audience. 
for the presentation. I believe now when you go to teach, you are going to turn away from teacher-centered teaching to learner-centered. And uh, you must, as he has told us, and you are very aware, you must emphasize the competencies, the five, the knowledge, understanding, the skills, and uh, what else? The attitude and the values. You must emphasize that. I'm not going to reoccur what he has said. He has done a wonderful job. Just go there and be learner-centered. Let us make sure the students we teach have self esteem. Let us boost their self esteem. Remember, every question the learners say is correct, as he has said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you very much for this opportunity. First of all, uh, I do request a very big round of applause to, to Mr. Rugemwa. <laughs> Myself, it is my first time to interface with Mr. Rugemwa, but I've learned a lot from Mr. Rugemwa's presentation about the new curriculum. And I've been one of the most active participants today. Really, the new curriculum workshop today has taught me a lot that a lot has changed in our education curriculum and you people should embrace that so much. Because uh, regarding what a teacher is supposed to use when preparing to go for teaching, he supplemented very two important items, which are also myself I didn't know, because I only knew the scheme of work and lesson plan, but he supplemented the learner's book and then the teacher's guide. So making them four. So uh, I request you to take them very seriously, members and. Always pray to God that we all get blessed and to bless Mr. Lugemwa so much. I thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the English say, He who sings the last sings the best. Okay? On behalf of the staff and the students, we would like to extend our great gratitude and thank you, one, to our dean, a handicap. <laughs> we extend another loudest handicap to Mr. Bugemwa. <laughs> we are living in the global era not era, era. Kindly, Mr. Rugema, share with us your phone contacts for better communication. I thank you. Since I sing the best, may I request you we raise up hand for the lasting prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gathering us today and enabling us to have the new knowledge about the reformation in the curriculum of the senior one and senior two. And also having the reformation of the knowledge as students and teachers. Be with us, bless us, continue to bless us with the knowledge and also give us your wisdom so that we can implement the knowledge we have had. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank, you for coming. Thank you for coming. Just a, just a moment, he's giving us his phone contacts. Uh, yes, the WhatsApp one is uh, Airtel one. It's 0703 06 
The MTN one is 077828871. Those are my numbers. They are always on, but it's better. <laughs> the email. Okay, it's. Uh, there are two also, but there is Pilugema at UCU. Pilugema at ucu.ac.ug. Let me write them down maybe on a sheet of paper. Pilugema at ucu.ac.ug. And another one is Patson Lug at gmail.com. Let me write them somewhere here.